four goalposts being torn down at Carter Finley. Allow me to introduce you. His name is Holt, Tory Holt. He's the most dangerous receiver in the country. Tory Holt, and Tory Holt is off to the races. Tory Holt will go all the way for the touchdown, 61 yards. Tory Holt can also beat you on special teams. Just ask the mighty Seminoles. Still on his feet is Tory Holt. And he can even beat you with his arm. Heisman Trophy candidate, no question about it. Tory Holt and the NC State Wolfpack take on Duke next. Uh, joining us at Carter Finley Stadium, the North Carolina State Fairgrounds, home to a ritual of autumn and a salute to nature's bounty, the North Carolina State Fair. And just next door, Carter Finley Stadium, where Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you ACC football. The Duke Blue Devils take on the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Steve Arnold. I'm with Doc Walker. Well, we talk about Torrey Holt being the big play guy, but big plays don't happen unless Jamie Barnett gets the ball out to him. And Barnett is a terrific field general. He creates a lot of problems for an opposing defense, not only with his athleticism and his legs, but his ability to throw accurate passes. This kid throws a nice intermediate pass and a, and a bomb as well. Two receivers here for NC State average over 20 yards a catch. And, of course, the little pause last week with North Carolina State as uh, Jamie Barnett went down in the second quarter and gave everybody cause for concern. It's always a scary moment when your quarterback who runs gets knocked out. I mean, that was a tough shot by the Yellow Jackets. Now, this will be the first time in three years that Barnett has had to come off a concussion. The question will be, how does he respond? You know Duke is going to send everybody after him. Of course, they're going to try to test him, but they also have to keep track of 81 and 84, and that falls to the cornerbacks, especially Lamar Grant and Ronnie Hamlin. Well, Lamar Grant has had a terrific year for Duke. He's been all over, really, the opposition's best wide receiver. I think the key aside of Grant will be number 11, Ronnie Hamilton, that young man, as a freshman, will be tested because you, know, you can say Holt on one side, but Coleman on the other, so he's going to have to prove he can get it done. Now, Barnett's going to have time to throw. It will probably fall in the hands of Chris Combs. He'll put pressure on. A pure beast. I mean, this guy does everything. You look at the 18 quarterback sacks, but he leads Duke's defense in three of the four defensive categories, so he's everywhere, and especially tackles for losses. He had four tackles for losses in Duke's record-breaking win over Wake Forest that shattered a 21-game ACC losing streak. They've got that off their back. They're ready to dig on state next. ACC football is brought to you by Nations Bank. Nations Bank lends more money to small businesses than any bank in America. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. By Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service, when your priority is fast delivery for less. By Dodge, the truck stop of the New South, the new Dodge. By Bell South, Bell Back South is proud to be the official telecommunications company of the ACC. By Domino's Heatway, just one more way, Domino's is delivering a million smiles a day. And by Pepsi, the choice of the ACC. It's a beautiful day in the capital city of North Carolina, and these two Tobacco Road rivals are ready to put some points on the scoreboard. And let's go to the sidelines for the third member of our broadcast crew here today, Charlie Frederick. Thanks, Steve. And you're right. If the past history of this series is any indication, these guys better be in good shape. Chances are they'll be going up and down the field at a rapid clip. Good thing it's not too hot today. The last three seasons, NC State has scored at least 40 points against the Duke Blue Devils. And on three occasions in this series, the two teams have combined to score at least 79 points. And 87 in Durham State outlasted Duke 47-45. In 88 here in Raleigh, the two teams played a great ball game that ended in a 43-43 tie. And three years ago in Durham, State won a squeaker 41-38. Will we have another track meet here today? We'll find out soon. Kickoff coming up.
join the race in the ACC. Here's the series between the two. States won the last four. That's happened twice in the history between these two. Never has Duke lost five straight in this series. And they're hoping to avoid that here today. And boy, by their win over Wake Forest, we'll see what happens. Kent Passingham is getting set to kick. NC State won the coin toss, deferred their option. Duke has decided to receive and go on offense first. Richmond Flowers and Scotty Montgomery are back to receive, along with Dwayne Epperson for the Duke Blue Devils, and we are underway. Duke in the road, white and blue, and here's Richmond Flowers. Breaks one tackle and then slips out to the 23-yard line, brought down by Adrian Wilson. So at the helm this afternoon, it'll be Spencer Romine. And Romine will be on kind of a short leash. Bobby Campbell came in in the second half and looked good, but here's what Romine has done thus far this season. Three touchdowns, six interceptions. The Duke offense overall has had trouble turning the ball over. Their defense, Doc, has been equal to the Yeah, they played very well. First and ten, and the ball spotted at the 23, and we're underway. Lone setback is B.J. Hill. He's a true freshman. Romine sprinting out to the left, looking to the flats to Flowers, incomplete. And with that, let's take a look at our Geico starting lineups. And Richmond Flowers is going to step front and center. He is tied with Torrey Holt, a number of receptions in the ACC. Hill and Rashid behind the quarterback. Montgomery and Hart finish out the receivers. And up front, we're going to keep our eye on Austin Smithwick, a young man who's going to have the task to block Greg Derrick for the Wolfpack. Friedman, Andrews, Lynch, and White up front. Second down coming in 10. Three wide outs to the wide side of the field. Four wide outs total. Montgomery, Hart, and Hartofelis are to the top of the screen. And off to B.J. Hill. Nice step around, still on his feet. And Hill, who is the leading rookie ground gainer in the ACC, gets out to the 30-yard line. And it's a six-yard gain. It'll bring up third down and four as we look at NC State's defense. Bobby Cotton is a good one. He's from Windsor, Virginia, and he'll be surrounded by Rashad Streets, Jeff Kuhn, and Greg Derrick. In the linebacker spot, Edric Smith, a tremendous true freshman, has done a great job. White Harris has done a good job for him as well. Perry will keep our eye on the hit man. He has been spectacular so far for the pack. They call those guys in the secondary the rough riders. Ramsey State, 13 interceptions thus far this season. Third and four for Duke, no score, and Hill picks up the first down. Gets over the 35-yard line and down to about the 36-yard line. Picked up on the tackle by the true freshman that Doc was talking about, Edric Smith and Rodney Red. Real nice push on the left side, Freeman and White. Now watch these guys keep the shoulders square, pad on pad, and see White makes a real good cut. Nice cut because he has his eyes open. We talk about the backs who run with vision. That was a perfect example. First and ten. There's B.J. Hill on the season. Healthy nearly four yard per carry clip. Second pass of the game for Romine, and it is incomplete, intended for Flowers near midfield. Richmond Flowers out of Birmingham, Alabama. Of course, his father played football at Tennessee and many accolades in football and track. Flowers is a young man we're going to focus on a lot, watch the route. Now, he doesn't get credit for it. See the nice push? Now, see the plant? Gets the hit, turned around. Ball is there, a little though. He gets down on it. Really poor pass, more than a drop on that one. Tony Scott covering on the play as Flowers assumes his position on second and ten at the 36-yard line. Tight end in motion. Play action for Romine. And the pass is complete to Montgomery. And he's up to the 46-yard line. The big hit put on the play by Lloyd Harrison. But Montgomery makes the catch, and it's going to be a completion of close to eight yards. You know, it's one thing when you start talking about the secondary. Again, Montgomery's a guy who can beat you. But I think the one thing that Harrison has is going against Holt and these guys in practice. One thing to make the catch, nice hit. I like the way he hit, kept it high on the pads. Hopefully, he can knock that ball out. That's a good, good catch by Montgomery. That's a great point. Going up against Holt and Coleman in practice, there isn't anything these yep. guys haven't seen, is there? Makes you better. Third down and very short yardage here for Duke. And a handoff to Hill, and again, looks like he has on the initial surge enough for the first down. Hit by Rodney Red, the strong safety coming up to make the stop, but he looks like he got the 47 yard line. It may be close enough for a measurement. LeVar Fisher, another true freshman, also in on the tackle. We say true freshman. This is a young North Carolina State football team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, they really are. Fisher. It's one of the one of the three guys we will talk a heck of a lot about Fisher, Smith, 
and uh, Corey Lyons, a backup and outside linebacker. You know, they brought in five linebackers in their recruiting class this mm -hmm. year, and three of them are getting used. Adrian three Wilson also has played well on yep. the tailback. On first down. Romine with play action and he runs right into Bobby Cotton. Cotton with the first sack of the day and it takes Duke back to their own 38 yard line. What a play by Bobby Cotton. Kind of hard to trick those veterans. Bobby Cotton's been here a long spell. You think about Morocco Brown and Dwayne Everett, some of the guys who played here and wore that red and white of the Wolfpacks. He's just not faked out. Kept his keys, eyeballed the quarterback, and that's where film study really pays off. See, a decent fake. But Bobby Cotton said not today and not this time in the ball game. Second down and about 17. Hill goes out of the backfield. It's an empty set as they call it. The lateral goes to Montgomery and he tries to create some room down the sidelines. And there's a flag thrown in on the play. A flag thrown back at midfield. They mark his yardage good to the NC State 42 and a half yard line. That would be good for a first down, but let's see what the call is going to be. It's a hold against Duke. Steve, this is a play that they favor a lot. And no backs, an empty backfield. They like to get the ball outside to Montgomery with two guys in front. Offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. And there's Jim Knight. The tough block on this is the outside receiver because he's got to hold the block. And it's right there where we see it. And that's 81, Mike Hart. Now, Mike did a fine job, but you got to hold it forever. And if you do grab cloth, you got to release it. If not, you'll get called. So the play comes back, and it's second and 16 all over again, back at the 39 yard line. And this time out of the shotgun. Romine, quarterback draw all the way. Friedman throws a block, but coming up from the safety position is Tony Scott, actually from the right corner. And it'll be a gain of about seven. It'll bring up third down and close to 10. You noticed early on, Steve, that a lot of balance inside, running between the tackles, and they spread you out. You get, you get no back. You get uh, three wide receivers, one back. So defensively, you constantly got to identify set formation and tendencies. And of course, Duke's taking notes on who lines up where. Bingo. They want to see where they can exploit. And the tight end sometimes, Doc, is important. Who they line up? Is it going to be a strong safety? Is it a linebacker then, Doc? Third down and 10 coming for Duke. The flare out to Epperson, but nothing doing. And it is Marcel Hopp, the nickelback who came in and made the drop on Epperson and that'll force Duke to punt. That's fine play. Marcel Huff read it and then there's one thing you get the identification see the inside backers on the blitz then he got on held on for dear life. That's a fine tackle. Marcel Huff making the stop the junior from Bethune South Carolina. Brian Morton getting set to punt. One of the most exciting players in the country getting ready to receive. Big pressure on by State. Torrey Holt gets away from this one, though. Inside the 10, and it takes a Duke bounce at the one yard line. So Brian Morton does the job. And Duke backs up NC State to their own one on a 55 yard punt from Brian Morton. NC State for the ball when we come back. Stadium, no score. Duke and NC State and North Carolina State with a football at their own one yard line. And there's Jamie Barnett. He leads the ACC in total offense at 268 yards per game. And that's despite sitting out a half a game last week after suffering the concussion, the first of his career. See the numbers 1,302 yards in the air, but he's 99 yards from pay dirt right now at his own one. And he's back to throw. Looking for guess who? Corey Holt complete. Oh, man. On Lamar Grant. Out to the 41 yard line. It's a 40 yard game. Let's not waste any time. No, let's get right after him. I mean, and let's go against their best corner. I mean, you, this young man shows a lot of confidence. He did yesterday when we interviewed him. I mean, he wants the football. Look at the reaction to the football. I mean, up in the sky, in the sun, and we see the push. See, at this point, Grant has to commit. He's going to go on the go. Grant doesn't look back, and that was his mistake. He didn't look back late. He didn't look back at all. you got to find the ball. Once the receiver turns, you've got to turn. 
Great adjustment there by Holt. First and ten at the 41 yard line. NC State in business. And off now goes to Ray Harrison. Two freshmen. Or Ray Robinson. They're up to the 42 yard line. They like Robinson. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for NC State. As the NC State offense, Chris Coleman, the receiver you don't hear about, as opposed to Torrey Holt, he has more per average. Holt, Butler, Robinson, and Smith complete the lineup. And up front, Todd Boyle will have the task to block Chris Combs and Rice and Burroughs and Knutson and Rafferty have been solid up front. Second down now, and about eight. Ball at the 43 yard line of NC State after the first opening. Play a late handoff. And Robinson looked like he was back a little bit too deep on that one. Set back to the 41 yard line. And Kendrell Knight and Gannon Shepard in on the tackle. Shepard, Scanlon, and Chris Combs out in trophy cannon for the Blue Devil defense. Well, Combs will always be there. He's always close to it. Kevin Lewis is a guy who can blitz and get all over the quarterback. We've talked about Knight, uh, Stahlmeyer, and Delama Lure, who has played exceptionally well. In the secondary, Hamilton, the uh, true freshman, Grant, who you've seen, Clark and Jones, two good inside safeties. One of the better defensive units you'll see in the ACC, and they've got State backed up to third and ten. Rolling out, Barnett. Barnett, his pass incomplete. Headed for the sidelines, and State's punting unit is headed in for a quick appearance. So it's four downs and out. The 41-yard pass reception gave the defense field position. Yeah, got him out of a jam that time. Uh, he, he wanted to go outside the leak. He had Holt, believe it or not, open underneath and opted to go outside for the big one. So back to kick is going to be Scott Earwood. And Earwood's been plagued with leg problems. And that has brought up a whole bunch of things. And the snap by Dorn over his head. It's a replay of NC State a week ago. Here is Earwood, and he's tackled in play at the one-yard line. And Duke will take over on downs. The special teams has really been the opposition's best friend. I mean, the NC State's losses, I mean, you look at it, the defense hasn't been taken advantage of. They've been put in a poor situation. Go back to Baylor, would have given up points. And again, against the Jackets. I mean, that's just a power snap. That's the snap by Dorn. That is Grant Dorn, the sophomore from New Alexandria, Pennsylvania, just shot it over the head of Scott Earwood. And what Earwood would like to do, and I'm sure Coach will tell him, is just secure it. Because you give up five yards trying to make a play at this point, I mean, you're, you're cooked. Duke offense now with the football and close to the end zone. That's Hill, but he's dragged back out of there by Bobby Cotton. So Duke blessed with excellent field position right down at the one, and they get four shots at it right here after the punt attempt. Second bad snap. This one does not result in a touchdown yet, but it may not be far away. Put you in bad circumstances. Wow. That man in your screen. Coach Goldsmith knows that he they can't not get a score on this. The heck with a field goal. You want to power this in and get seven. Montgomery split wide out. Flowers to the top. Hill is the lone setback. Lots of movement by NC State. Hill into the end zone for a score. And there's a flag on the play. Now let's see if they were drawn off. Which is likely not going to be the case, or the touchdown stands. But there is a flag at the end zone. It's against NC State. Touchdown for Duke. And the Blue Devils take advantage of the good fortune given them by the bad snap on the NC State punt attempt. Nothing more needed to be said than to watch Troy Andrew when he picked when he picked Hill up in that end zone. Talk about a power cling. See, there's some enthusiasm going on now with Duke because they won their first ACC regular season game in a long while a week ago, and it has carried over. Sims Lenhart with the kick, and that's automatic for Sims Lenhart. So the point after is good, and the Duke Blue Devils take advantage of their good fortune. They recover the ball on the, the one and go in. We'll re Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium. Duke strikes quickly. It is B.J. Hill, and we'll see it. Well, a basic lead. Again, everybody, I mean, good movement up front. Nice hole for Duke. Again, confidence on their side. This is one where you just had to score. You couldn't end up being stopped selling for three on that one. Well, there's, there's an economical scoring drive. I like that. Two plays Short to cover sweep. one yard. Short and sweet. But it was set up by a bad snap on the punt that sent NC State back to recover that snap to their own one yard line. There's a kickoff by Lenhart. And then Duke picked it up and took it in. 
return is after the 29 yard line. Brian Williams, well, another one of those true freshmen. Coming up next week, well, we journey down to Winston Salem, North Carolina on ACC football, and it's the North Carolina Tar Heels taking on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. These two teams, no love lost. You'll see it on many of these same stations at 12 noon. And JPSports.com is your new source for sports on the internet. JPSports.com is now online. Each week we'll bring you previews of the upcoming telecast and in-depth coverage of the ACC for Inside Scoop. Log on to JPSports.com. And see Doc's pitcher. Barnett first and ten. Lofts one up there for Holt, but it's too tall. Grant in coverage. And of course we want to say a special to hello to Wendy Voigt, who is a longtime friend of ours and co-worker for 11 or 12 years at Jefferson Pilot. She was involved in a traffic accident. She's getting better every day and our thoughts are with her and we're all going to go over the state fair and have a funnel cake in your honor. Wendy. So <laughs> glad to have you with us this afternoon. Barnett hands off. This is Robinson. Nothing doing there, and he runs right into Nate Krill. Backing up Gannon Shepard at the defensive tackle spot. And Duke's defense has been very, very stout here in the early going. Ryan Stallmeyer helping out as well. Talk about plugger. He gave it nowhere to go. And they're two inside back of Delama Lua and Stallmeyer have done a great job all year. See Combs there. Right there, that young man was really onside. He kept his shoulders square. He forced all the action inside, funneled it in, and those two linebackers, Ryan Stallmeyer, they ate him up. So NC State trailing here, seven nothing, facing third down and about 15. They're backed up at their own 17-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Jamie Barnett blitzes on the pass, complete to Robinson. Robinson knocked down by Keenan Hawley at the 25 yard line. It'll be a gain of about eight but the punting unit is on and that gives pause for some concern for NC State because the last time they lined up in punt formation. Well Robinson's a young man. He, again he's a freshman. He will find out as he continues to grow in this conference. You catch passes and you don't stop your own forward momentum. You drive through that. He might have broke a tackle. New snapper now for Earwood. They'll get back and get it and the fans cheer. He didn't have much time to get away with it. And it's a short punt. And Duke once again will have excellent field position. They'll start this drive from their own 49. The Duke Blue Devils with the ball and a seven point lead. We'll be back right after this. I think 614 left here in the first quarter here in Raleigh. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the ACC, presents this salute to excellence question. Who was the NC State receiver in 1997 that helped make the Wolfpack the fifth team in league history to have a 1,000 yard rusher and receiver in the same year? Now, if you know the answer, log on to the internet on the address on the screen with the correct answer before next Saturday's telecast. You'll be entered to win two tickets in the ACC Champions Bowl game. Stay tuned. We'll have the answer for you before the end of the game. Yes, it's an open book test. Can I register for that? Sure can. I mean, we're going to give you the answer in the second half. So you oh, just got to leak the wall. You got a week to log on. I may already know that. <laughs> and I may not. I think you do. First and 10 at the 49. Duke's had excellent field position all afternoon here. Let's see what they do with their second their third series with the ball. Roman hit as he threw. And that shortened the ball for Richmond Flowers. However, there is a flag in the Duke backfield. See what Jim Knight's call is. And it is a hold. Second such against Duke. Fred Goldsmith's big concern turnovers, penalties, they all add up and they increase what. Uh, Georgia Tech offensive coordinator Ralph Regan says is your margin for error. error. That was a good one. We like that. Great formula. Well, it's tough to give up a, a sack and get a hold of it. You'd like to think that if you do hold, you at least can prevent your quarterback from taking a Rydell upside his knob. <laughs> <laughs> this will be first and 27. It's back to the 32 yard line of Duke. Duke up 7 0. Taking advantage of a bad snap on an NC State punt attempt. Here's B.J. Hill. And Hill is met at the line of scrimmage. And he's hit quite hard there by LeVar Fisher, among others. Fisher, true freshman out of Beaufort, North Carolina. Hey, fans, call now for a delicious Domino's pizza. Domino's delivering a million smiles a day. And you should have it. 
Well, by the time halftime comes around, what's your favorite pizza top? Mushroom green pepper. Mushroom green pepper? Uh -huh. All right. Doc's calling now. I like that. Second down and 22. Gain of five on the play. B.J. Hill in the backfield. Along with Dawood Rashid. Here is Romine with time to throw. It's a wobble to Montgomery that's a little too tall. Covering on the play, Lloyd Harris. Junior from Floral Park, New York. It's hard to get better pass protection than Duke just demonstrated. I mean, they had everything, everybody locked up man on man and uh, gave Romine great time. And when you get that kind of time <laughs> in this conference, you got to make the pass. you got to get that one down. Let's take another look at it. Is he really no threat? There he's able to step up in the pocket, but he let it go high. Didn't follow through. You can see it in the release. He didn't follow through on the throw. Third down, 22. Duke up 7 0, trying to keep this possession alive. Quarterback draw again. Romine picking his way through the defense, but he won't get by Tony Scott. Brought down at the 47 yard line. And it'll be a pickup of about nine, but it won't be enough to keep the punt unit off the field. Both teams now just jockeying for position. Romine is a pretty good athlete, and he shows you that he can make people miss out in the open field, but. So far, the Wolfpack defensively have they've not made a mistake. Ryan Morton is back in punt formation. Torrey Holt, one of the top punt returners in the country, at 17 per return. But that's scary. Oh, it is. <laughs> Got it. Wow. NC State picks it up, ball loose. It's going to go to NC State anyway because of the change of downs, and it's picked up by the Wolfpack. So the kicking game has proved to be the catalyst. The block by oh. Chris Coleman. Yeah. The wide receiver coming in on the punt coverage team. I'll say this to you, Steve. Every NFL scout is here today. They watch, will watch a wide receiver who averages 20 yards a catch, goes in and blocks a punt. You better believe they're writing notes down about this young man. The NC State, they can feel like they were old one. Nice up and under move. Boy, that's the way you do it. And then you watch the pack converge on it. Big play for NC State. Leak recovers, but they were going to get it on downs anyway, and they have it at the Duke 31-yard line. So don't go away when the punt units come on this afternoon. Barnett to the flats. It is complete to Butler. And Jeff Butler, the fullback, his third pass reception of the season, and he's close to a first down at the 21-yard line. That was great recognition by Barnett. He wanted Holt on the post. They doubled him and he checked down. The last series he decided to go to leak and he forced it and they, they had to punt. So he, you know, we were talking about that concussion in our open. We were concerned how he would follow up. I would say he's okay. <laughs> he's done all right. But you know Duke's going to keep coming at it because that's their nature. Oh, you have to. They're, they're, you they're have three, to. There are three four alignments, so they're always going to send somebody. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be close enough here, it looks like, for a measurement on first, the first down. Now Jim Knight says, now keep the chains right there. We're, we're a credit card short of first down here at the 21 and a half yard line. So it'll bring up a second down and officially one, but you and I both know it's about six inches. They get the first down. Three down here for Jamie Barnett, which could be a dangerous time. Well, we love that. We just love a second and one. I mean, there's a, co there isn't a, a, a coordinator in the country that just didn't shake his hands and go, all right, now I can play. Tory Holt is wide to the wide side of your screen. And this is going to be Barnett. So let's get the first down, fellas, and he does. Down to the 20-yard line. Stallmeyer and Delamalore in on the tackle for Duke. I'm surprised at the call. Are you? Yes, yes, indeed. Well, you know, when you, you lose your quarterback, he gets a concussion. I mean, that's a good shot there. If you're Duke on a sneak to come in and get a free shot, I think I might have wanted to hand that one off and, and preserve that right. Well, maybe that, maybe on the other side of the coin, that's the reason they did it. And you're probably right. Not. Don't take that to the back. Well, you might be. <laughs> Holt to the short side, Coleman to the wide side. Here's the option for the quarterback, Barnett. Not much there. Gannon Shepard is there to stop him, and it's at the 19-yard line. Gain of maybe a yard. Kevin Lewis helped out on the tackle. 
And you know what happens because he can run the option, because he gets outside, he can stretch the defense, get on the grass, look at the relationship to the pitch man. See, it's always there. And you know, a lot of this, Steve, you might be right. Maybe he wants to run it. Maybe he wants to just get this out. Hey, I'm a football player. I had something bad happen, but I'm not going to let it carry over to this game. Butler and Robinson are the setbacks. Hold is in the slot. Leak is wide out to the wide side. Fumble. Ball is loose. Who's got it? Duke says they've got it. Let's see. Jim Knight motions that maybe NC State might have gotten it back. Well, that's a great save by Alex Rice. I mean, a terrific save. And that brings it back to the 20. They lose a yard on it. Watch this. I mean, it's just there. I mean, a lot, and the big guys don't know that it's on the ground. Guys are yelling and see it. That's quick hands. Those were quick hands. That could have been a great turnaround of play for Duke. But instead, they're faced with third and ten. NC State trailing here by seven. Barnett out of the shotgun. Barnett scrambling. Delamalore in pursuit. Here's the pass to the end zone. He had Leak and the tight end Devon Smith. Well, too close together. You never want to see two receivers side by side. And now here comes another adventure as Dan Deskovich getting set to come into the ball game. We have a Duke player injured in the end zone. That's and that is Hamilton. That's the true freshman Hamilton. And what a fine season this young man has had and he'll have a busy afternoon today. He was chasing Coleman in the end zone. So far NC State has just not been able to to get their offense in sync. They've had a big play or so but they've not been able to find the groove that they've had in the big games. Well, a word on an NC State tradition. Here's Charlie Frederick on the sidelines. Steve, it's a very new tradition. Everybody who follows ACC football knows about Howard's Rock down at Clemson. The rock at the top of the hill. All the Tigers touch it before they run down into Death Valley. Well, at NC State, they've got something called the Pack Pylon. It's a pylon on the back corner of the end zone. Two dimes and a nickel. We understand State has been placing these two uh, dimes and a nickel on this very pylon all season long for good luck. They come, the players come by touch it as they run off the field. No uh, word as to why this works, but it seems to work, so the pack says we'll keep doing it. Well, Dan Deskovich is getting set to come in for a 37-yard field goal. This would be his longest. There's the snap, there's the hold, and the walk-on kicker is still perfect this season. Deskovich with his third field goal of the year. The kicking game has been a quandary for the NC State Wolfpack. Deskovich trying to bring some reason to it. And he gets NC State on the scoreboard with a 37 yard field goal at the 2 0 mark here in the first quarter. That was a good save, too. The snap was a little, little inside. Good hands, good placement. NC State has just not made it look easy thus far. Back to the two dimes and a nickel. That would not have worked at UCLA. We would pick those, that money up. So that money might not have been there. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in college and you're starving, that would have been tough. Might have gone out and left some change. <laughs> Might have put two pennies back, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Epperson and Montgomery are getting set to return the kick here for Duke as NC State gets on the board. They pick up the ball at the NC State or at the Duke 31 yard line and they get it down a little bit down to the 20 yard line before they have to kick the field goal. Again, another stout hole by the Duke defense and Michael Kane. Hoping that they can stay away from the punting units here today. His own, and of course, Fred Goldsmith has the same problem on the other sideline with the punt block. Well, one tally, telling stat that we've had all year long. Teams that convert turnovers into seven points as opposed to three yeah. usually end up smiling at the end of the contest. You know, we watched that Duke had an advantage. They went down, put points on the board. NC State gets a block, and they have to settle for three. Well, the conference's best example of that is Georgia Tech as well. Right. And they've, they've scored five defensive touchdowns this season. Passingham getting set to kick it away. And this is Richmond Flowers at the two. Flowers. Heads out over the 30 yard line to the 32. Brown in on the tackle. That's Roderick Brown and Flowers comes off to the sideline. It'll be first and 10 Duke. So Duke hangs on. They hold NC State to three after giving up field position on the block punt. In a turnover, Steve, it's always the emotion, you know, of a, of a bad play on your team. And you, you, you look to the, your defense or offensive unit and you go, hey, guys, bail us out. 
And when they bail you out, you come back and you like to say thank you on the next time you get the football. Spencer Romine still in at the helm on his fourth series. Scotty Montgomery is a lone setback. Here comes the pass. It is complete to his tight end, Mike Hart. He drives Rodney Red with him and is close to a first down out to the 40 yard line. Oh, Mike Hart has really come on strong. I mean, Terrence Dupree started the first couple of games, and Big Mike Hart has stepped up. He's blocked well, and he shows you there that not only can he catch it, but he can lower that shoulder and rumble. He's a redshirt freshman from Sayville, New York. Second down and a foot for Duke. Let's see how they play the second and short situation. Again, Montgomery is the lone setback. Romine scrambling out of the pocket. And he will not get out of the pocket. Dropped the football, it looked like. Now picks it back yeah, up. No. NC State's got it. It is Derek who picked it up. The turnover gives NC State the football in Duke territory at the 40 yard line. Boy, that was a rat a tat tat. You, you, you posed the question. Here's what Duke will do on second and short. Romine there doesn't have anywhere to go with it. He does tuck it. There is strip. That was more of a tackle and strip by Adrian Wilson, the other true freshman on the field for the pack. Well, it's been this way between these two schools over the years. Unusual games caused by unusual aspects of play. Turnover. Here for Duke gives NC State the ball at the Duke 40. Barnett straightens one out but can't get it to Torrey Holt. Covered by Lamar Grant. Interesting now Steve Martin. The first four possessions for NC State on first down they've gone airborne. Mm -hmm. You know and they're a bit reluctant to try to establish their ground attack and that happens sometimes when you lose. Uh, a great back and Stevens who's out and Ray Robinson they don't seem to have the confidence to want to feed him right now they're going to have to do that. Rashawn Spikes who normally starts at that tailback spot out with a shoulder injury for at least a month and Ray Robinson the true freshman getting the nod but you know we talked with Michael Kane yesterday a little reluctant with their true freshman tailbacks especially when they want to throw to them. There's the toss to Robinson. Hits the corner. Ooh, wow, that, that's a good confidence booster. <laughs> Not only for Robinson, but for the coaching staff. Man, man, man. Down to the 25 yard line, it's going to be a gain of about 15. Out on the outside, man, they were really able to, to hold some blocks. And Torrey Hope talked about his receiving, but all of the great ones were blocked. See, you see 81 right there. He makes it happen. I mean, that's against a good football player. And Grant, he holds him up long enough to allow Robinson to get the edge. You didn't see Leak. Well, that's nice. Well, Leak goes in and slows him up. And then you see Butler there throwing his body around. Do you see a stretch jersey there? Uh, yes. Second down. <laughs> and the handoff goes to Robinson. I just wanted to make sure you saw that. Yes, he did. Down to the 23. Keenan Holly in on the stop. Well, we mentioned run, and this is the thing that. Sometimes you can get so tempted when you've got a Holt and a Coleman in your offense to to try to feature them a bit too much. And I think you hit it on the head. They're looking for confidence in Robinson. Robinson shows him he can get it done. Ty Boyle, nice block on that last play. Second down. And off right at the middle. And there's nothing there for Butler, the fullback. Kendrell Knight is in there on the stop. Chris Combs in the vicinity as well. Knight has been very strong this season. He has. I mean, he really came on from the Virginia game on. I think Kendrell Knight has started to play really up to his potential. And that really gives him uh, good strength on both sides. Kevin Lewis has played well all year. Kendrell Knight has really stepped it up, made up his mind now that you're not going to beat him at the point of attack. That's the end of the first quarter as you see Kendrell Knight the sophomore from Wilson North Carolina head to the sideline an eventful first quarter the scoreboard not too awfully active but Duke has the better of it here at Carter Finley Stadium. It's Duke seven NC State three that's the end of the first quarter second quarter action when we return. Pleasure of the NC State Fair North Carolina State Fair at the fairgrounds adjacent to Carter Finley Stadium some three quarters of a million people will file through the turnstiles ride the Ferris wheel and eat lots of great food.
And they'll do that from now till next Sunday, as a matter of fact. What? There's Doc up there. Isn't is that where Hogwood is today? <laughs> Top of that Ferris wheel. <laughs> That's one place I do not want to be. Nope. All right, third down and about eight coming up here for NC State. They started at the Duke 40 yard line on the turnover, and they're trying to get down in the red zone and get something going. They're down seven to three. Jamie Barnett at quarterback. Kendrell Knight puts the rush on. The pass is complete, however. And it is to the tight end, Devon Smith. It's going to be close to the first down. What a connection because Barnett, Doc, got drilled by Kendrell Knight just as he let it go. Well, one thing that Barnett has shown, and that is no fear. This young man was knocked out last week against Georgia Tech. Stands in the pocket. Good hands inside by Smith. Kind of reminds the Wolfpack faithful of Big Lynn Dawson. When Lynn was here catching passes, and Lynn went on, had a fine career, played in New England, got in the Super Bowl, he was actually a sideline reporter That's right. for NC State. Well, it's going to be shy of the first down by about a half a yard. NC State going for it. Full house backfield. Ray Robinson, the up back. Jackson and Butler are the fullbacks in front of him. Robinson gets it, and he may be close to the first down. At the 15 yard line. He needed the 16. He's at the 15. And coming up to make the stop, Darius Clark. A little earlier, Robinson showed us great vision. This time, boy, if he keeps his, he puts that head up. He had to go down for the blow, but he might have been able to break it. You see a lot of big plays created off a short yardage situation. And the fullback had a nice block on Ryan Stallmeyer that time to keep him out of the hole. It was a function at the junction. Stallmeyer and Butler, <laughs> what a collision. First and 10 coming up. At the 15, Barnett on the pitch to Robinson, and he's joined at the corner by Darius Clark and Chris Combs. Boy, clip that film there. Send that out and show it as to how to stop the option, how to play it. Let's take a look at our duck at first quarter stats. Rushing yards. Well, that takes into account sack yardage. And of course, the passing yards, total yards in favor of Duke. The turnovers, however, may come back to haunt them. This one, NC State's working on. Well, that's been the area that they've always been concerned about. That one right there, that turnover category. Second down and 11. Barnett to throw. It's a little slant in for a hold. He drops it. Better go get after it. Let's see now. Strike is amazing. Now they're saying Now they're saying incomplete. Yes, so this run back is nothing. Well, that makes your personal highlights film. You can clip that. You can send it home to your folks. But Nate Krill, that shows some. He shows some wheels. But they're all congratulating him in the end zone. Well, this is demoralizing. It's going to come find out it comes back. Now can you get refocused and play defense? Because they all ran down there. Yeah. <laughs> Nate Krill. Let's watch this move at the end. Now, let's take it out from the from its inception. There you see Coleman going in to get a block. That's important. Their hole drops it. Now at this point, you're thinking, you, in football player, you got to react. And here he goes. Thinking, man, am I going to make the highlights? Now watch the move at the end. Right there. Oh. Uh, hey, that's nice. We got to give him big props on that. 255 pounds. That was worthy of a replay. Nate Krill. Nate Krill. Out of McLean, out of my stomping grounds, out of McLean, Virginia. Young man, you'll always, that's a keepsake. You'll yeah. always have that. Well, we showed it twice. Yeah, we showed it twice. So, I mean, if he's <laughs> taping it at home, he's got it. Forever and ever. There it goes, Dad. And it's going to come back and be third down and 11 for NC State. And Duke's defense comes back and gets their wind after pursuing Krill to the end zone. <laughs> the celebration. I'd bring the option right at him now. And now, and, and now this is a smart move by Duke. They took a timeout because they got to get they got to get their wind. So as they'll take a break, so will we. <laughs> it is 7-3. Duke in the lead. We'll return after this from Red Roof in. Seven, NC State three. BJ Hill's touchdown puts the Blue Devils here on top. Steve Martin, along with Doc Walker and Charlie Frederick. In sun splashed Raleigh, North Carolina. Beautiful day. Temperature not even yet to 70 degrees. Not much wind. And there's what NC State's done in the red zone. 11 touchdowns, two field goals, scoring 76% of the time. They're facing third and 11. They're at the 16 yard line of Duke. Barnett with play action. Going to the corner, wants Holt. Touchdown, NC State. I'm 
A turnover pays off for the Wolfpack and Torrey Holt falls in. Yet another touchdown reception, his fifth of the season. Well, you know, it's always a premium when you can get a guy like Torrey Holt, who's just having, as mentioned, a Heisman type of year to get matched up on a safety. I mean, anytime you get that, I mean, he's usually going to win, going to win that battle. Deskovitz out of the hold of Ryan Hamrick for the point after. Don't go away on the kicking game here. And for NC State, here comes the kick. And he's got it. And NC State steps out in front. Torrey Holt delivered the goods. That was a good save by Hamrick. This is going to be a corner route. Bit of play action on it. Freezes the backers. And then you see the separation. Ball was kind of late. He just goes back, reaches back, makes the grab. So you watch it. Now the key to a good route is to push it vertically. See that? Then he comes out, doesn't explode out of it, but watch this. He goes back and catches with the hands, secures the score. And that's just a super athlete getting it done. Makes it look easy. And Barnett going, oh yeah, he's safe. There we go. We're back. An air of confidence. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, um, you need that. You gotta have it. He's seen it before. Well, when you get knocked out of a game, I don't think you really believe you're back until you either run for one or throw a, throw a score. That's his 37th career touchdown pass. He is one away from tying Terry Harvey for the all-time NC State lead. And of course, Torrey Holt with his 25th career touchdown. Well, NC State, you think about uh, Grissett a year ago and Alvin Whitted. They have had guys here that can stretch the zone and that you've got to be pay a lot of attention to. But Torrey Holt, I mean, when you compare Brown and Desmond Howard, the guys who won Heisman trophies. Now you look at the career leaders in scores. Jamie That's Barnett right. may surpass that mark today, but who knows? Pretty good company there. Terry Harvey, Shane Montgomery. Ken Passingham getting set to kick it away. And back to get it. Richmond Flowers at his own 10. Out to the 20. Nice cut back by Flowers and a nice return after the 39 yard line. And he's brought down on the play by Tony Thompson, among others. And Duke will have the football. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South. You call the play feature. A look at a big call from ACC Games Past. First and 10, Duke sitting at their own 39 yard line. Bobby Campbell now is the quarterback for the Duke Blue Devils coming in on the fifth series of the afternoon. In a fine game 13 of 24 against Wake Forest a week ago and 191 yards and a touchdown. Campbell handing off to B.J. Hill and Hill gets ahead to the 41 yard line a gain of two. Duke's been a pretty good first half team as far as offense is concerned, but look what happens in the second half. Down to 16 in the fourth, 28 in the third. And it always hurts. You look at the opposition, 62 points here in their third, and that means they come out at halftime, make adjustments, put points on you, and you don't. And that is demoralizing. Second down and about eight. Campbell back to throw. And the flare pass for Hill. It's a lateral and goes out of bounds. Good awareness. I mean, just to when in doubt, go after the football. Exactly. <laughs> when well, in doubt. That's a lateral. So yeah. It's a live ball. Go after it. Pick it up and go. And for a freshman, I mean, that's hits up for B.J. Hill to be thinking. You know, I, I get it. When you've got a Scotty Montgomery, and we talked a lot about Holt. But when you've got a Scotty Montgomery on your side, you got to get him the ball. And I would think that's one of the priorities right now that Les Kidding Jr. would like to get the offensive coordinator for Duke would like to get the ball in the hands of number two Scotty Montgomery and because it is a lateral that means it's a live ball when it went out so it's a loss of six where it went out of bounds. And Scotty was blocking on that play and he's got to do some of that but he is a playmaker this guy get him a short one he can break it you take him deep he can catch it. Third down and 14. Out of the shotgun, Campbell with protection, and it breaks down. And he is chased down by Clayton White, among others. White, the only upperclassman, so to speak, and he's a sophomore on a dunk, North Carolina, and that linebacking crew makes the stop. 
Picks up his first sack of the ball game and four tackles for losses. He wanted to go inside to Scotty Montgomery. They doubled Montgomery, which is smart. And at that point, Campbell had nowhere to go. And that's just bringing him down. Dogging him, if you will. That's what you want to do on defense. That's the second sack of the day for the NC State Wolfpack. Low snap, Morton gets it away. Just in time. Hold will get away from it. You know, Torrey Holt did something on that reception right there. He motioned everybody away, including himself. Yeah. Completely. We've got a timeout on the field, but a flag on the field as well. So we'll hold up for the flag at the 39 yard line. Torrey Holt, pretty smart football player. He not only knew he wasn't going to punt it, he wasn't going to get it, but he was going to wave off everybody else to get out of the way as well. 32 yard kick, but here's the penalty. Jim Knight getting set to make the call as he explains to the NC State sideline. Dead ball, late hit, 15 yards, first down. Big help to NC State. Let's see it. Right, NC State, and again, that, that's going to be that was a good hit. I thought early on. Norcus makes the hit that caused the penalty. And it'll be NC State football when we come back. They lead. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. And he's trying to take his place in the Heisman race. Only two other wide receivers have won Heisman trophies. Desmond Howard and Tim Brown. And here's how he stacks up against them. In yards per game on reception and all-purpose yards. So one would think that Torrey Holt gets a mention and more than just a mention for the Heisman. Well, he deserves it. He really does. He's been a, a young man who clearly dominates the opposition. He is the focal point of their entire offense, and he is yet to let him down all year long. Even in defeat, he's the man. So high school star at East Guilford near Gibsonville, North Carolina, about 50 miles west of here. And it's first and 10 NC State at the Duke 45. Here's Robinson on the pitch, and Kendall Knight and Darius Clark make the stop, and it's going to be a gain of about three yards on the play. Great force by Darius Clark. You mentioned this secondary and Moyer and Jones and Grant. Here you see Clark right there. Now watch as he gets up. Look at his angle. He's going to force it inside and still be a part of the play. I mean you get a bonus point if you force him in. If you force him in and make the play was well, a double milkshake performance there. <laughs> double milkshake. Right? Double milkshake. <laughs> the ones that the straw stands up in. Don't you like those. I like them. Could have a stomach pump. Ronnie Hamilton is back in the game. He was shaken up in the end zone early on. Barnett back to throw on second down. Stallmeyer blitzes in, but out to get it is Holt. Here's where he's the most dangerous. Lamar Grant honors that speed and drives him out of bounds to the 18 yard line, and that's Holt's third catch of the day. And again, Barnett throwing under pressure. The one thing that Duke has got to be frustrated about is that they're just a second away from a sack. But when they fail to get it done, then Barnett makes you pay for it. Again, not a picturesque pass, but he's going backwards. Lucky to get it off. Stallmeyer once again in his face. And see the move. Holt had Grant. Again, an excellent DB. Stumbling and bumbling in the secondary. And he makes another big play. Doesn't have to be too graceful when Torrey Holt's on the receiving end. First and 10 at the 17. Handoff goes to Robinson. And again, NC State. Looks like they're having some timing and spacing problems in that backfield. Barnett was reaching for that handoff. Yeah, he well. was. And the problem again to Lamalu and that gentleman right there on your screen, Ryan Stallmeyer. Again, those two got inside linebackers. They're one and three in tackles. Very productive. Elsewhere around the country, Georgia, even Vanderbilt between the hedges today, Ohio oh. State. Will they lose again before Michigan? And there's Wisconsin taking on Illinois today. A Big Ten play. An ACC play. It's NC State leading Duke 10-7. We're in the second quarter. And NC State driving. Here's Barnett looking for holes in the end zone against double coverage. Hamilton in front. Keenan Hawley in back. Hawley did a good job. That's about as close as we've seen anybody. Torrey Holt running down it in the secondary. You got to have a combination to stop him. You got to have pressure on the quarterback. And you've got to have DBs that will gamble and take advantage, uh, you know, of angles. Now let's watch it. You see, good forward lean gets inside. Now watch the recovery. Holly will recover. Ball's high and away. And you also got to hope he runs out of real estate. That's the other. That's, <laughs> that's the other thing that helps you. <laughs> and you're down there at the 15-yard line, and that just might happen. You only have 25 yards of territory to work with. 
third down and nine at the 16. And she stayed up by three looking to build on it. Holmes in pursuit of Barnett. And it'll be Steinball that drives him out at the 20 now the 19 yard line a loss of three on the play. A loss of three but he's a constant threat. Three or four people have gone after him. We have a flag. Flag down in front of the NC State bench. One thing they need to do is get a little bit of mesh on that fake. Keep those backers in. You see Combs? Maybe got grabbed there. A pull a little cloth. And see the average quarterback just goes down. This guy, boy, is slippery. Let's see what the penalty is going to be. Could it be another late hit? No, it's a hold. And that is going to offset what was a good defensive play by Duke, and it's going to push the ball half the distance. Jim Knight and crew will mark it off. Fred Goldsmith shaking his head. This is a third penalty that they've had to endure, and all of them seemingly have been. This is their fourth penalty, and three of the four have been majors. Great players force you to hold. That's the benefit of having the Tory Holt on your side. I'm waiting to hear Chris Coleman get involved in this offense. I mean, here's a guy averages 20 yards a catch, and has been dormant. Well, he's already had some impact. Coleman, of course, blocked the punt. No teams, and there he is. Terrific play. Holding on the defense. It was a running play. It is not an automatic first down. Half the distance, repeat third. Excellent description from Jim Knight. It's half the distance. It is not, as he said, the automatic first down. It brings up third and about a yard. NC State up seven, uh, by a score of 10 to 7. Tory Holt, 21 yard pass reception from Jamie Barnett. Jackson and Robinson, the setbacks. Barnett will carry it himself. Shepard hauls him down, and he is going to be close to the first down. He needed the six yard line. Let's see if he got it. Just made up his mind that he was going to run that on the keeper. Watch the hole. See what I mean? Great players force the opposition to make mistakes. Killer route. Yeah. And again, again, so we're not talking about a guy trying to play in the second year. Lamar Grant's an outstanding corner. So this is what makes his Torrey Holt's performance even better. First and goal from the six, full house backfield for NC State. Robinson gets the call and runs headlong into Holly, but then surges ahead. Gets to the one yard line, a gain of five. He hit Hawley at the line of scrimmage and just kept on going. But well, Amalora picked him down. That was strong. He didn't wait on his fullback on the lead, Jeff Butler, the human battering ram for the Wolfpack. He slammed it in there. This young man's impressive because upon contact, he gets stronger. And that's a trademark of outstanding back. Watch the lead in there. See, there you see Butler 30. Now, was he contact? Spin. Spin, contact, still picks up about three or four yards. Full house backfield again. Second and goal. Hand off Robinson. Does he get over the stack? Touchdown, NC State. Boy, this kid's a keeper. Think about Jermaine Stevens and the great backs that we've had the pleasure to watch here at NC State. And they just keep bringing them in. They've had a, a lot of luck with young players that come in here and get it going. Well, you know, Michael Kane told us he brought in linebackers and tailbacks, five of each in the recruiting class, and there was a thought that one of them would get in there, and this take, is one. Take a look at it. Boy, Ryan Knutson, he was slamming his body in there. You see big number 89, Devon Smith. Here comes Deskovich out of Charlotte, North Carolina. The kick is good. It's been perfect and everything that's been held before it. And NC State scores and advances their lead to 10. After spotting Duke the first seven points in the ball game, they've scored 17 unanswered points. Let's see if he got over the end zone. Well, the ball has got to break the plane. Let's see, he'll take in flight. Let's check out the hops. Looks pretty decent. I mean, it, it is questionable. I don't see the extension of the ball, but the gentleman in the striped shirt does. And that's all that matters. And I think the far sideline official yeah, had a better angle. He had a great look at it, saw it. We're going to go with him. Yep. He was pretty sure when he put it up. So Robinson, who had 73 yards rushing against Georgia Tech a week ago, gets the touchdown. 
And that's going to be his fourth touchdown in his career. And it puts NC State up here by a score of 17 to 7 over the Duke Blue Devils. As we expected, and as Charlie Frederick talked about at the outset of this game, a lot of points on the scoreboard, 24 in this first half. And they've come in sometimes unorthodox fashion. Seven plays, 46 yards is all they had to drive. NC State, last three possessions. He started the Duke 31, the Duke 40, and that time from the 46. Robinson caps it off on the seventh play from one yard out. And Deskovich, or rather this is going to be passing him to do the kickoff duties for the Wolfpack. NC State has shown us all year long. When they're on, they can beat anybody. You know, the problem is when they're not on or when they create the, the turnovers and have mistakes on special teams. Well, this would be an interesting week for this team. How it would respond from losing at home against Georgia Tech. And so far, so good. Here is Epperson. And he is upended. And upended good by Adrian Wilson. Two freshmen out of high point, North Carolina. And that puts Duke in bad field position at their own 16 yard line. They're on four or five in the 40, strong in the weight room. He's quite a prospect. First and 10 from the 15 yard line, Bobby Campbell in the second series. Play action on first down, has protection. Throws it to Flowers, and it is complete out to about the 27 yard line, and it'll be good for the first down, a pass connection of 12 yards. It's a good way to get things started for Bobby Campbell. Get his confidence going. He's got, again, two outstanding receivers in Flowers and Scotty Montgomery. The three possessions, total yardage, 3.6 yards per possession. Less than a minute. And, uh, less than a minute. That won't make you real popular with your defense. No, it won't. And here's Latavius Wilkes, his first rush of the day. And Wilkes gets up to the 35 yard line. That's a gain of eight yards. William Pennell in on the tackle. Wilkes is a junior from Crestview, Florida. Averaging 3.5 a carry. And the thing about Duke, I mean, put 158 yards a game on the ground. I mean, they can run the football. They showed us that against Georgia Tech, but their turnovers, bad field position, and killed them. Has uh, forced them out of the running game, and they're down by 10. You can't desert it now. Campbell hands off to Wilkes would seal off the corner and Wilkes goes straight ahead to the 38 yard line and it's going to be a gain of three on the play. Sheldon Key backing up Edric Smith the middle linebacker in on the tackle. We're also seeing some of uh, Kevin Turks has been shaking off an injury as well. Well the key to this is for Duke is they're able to secure the edge see the block inside by 89 Dupree that gives you the corner and this is a quick defense so if you can nail them down at the edge and Get around that corner, you can have some success. Wilkes got the first down, first and ten from the 38 yard line. Campbell back to throw. Campbell throws to the flats, complete to Montgomery, and he's in NC State territory at the 46 yard line. It's good for the first down, and it'll be a gain of about 15. Well, there he is, playmaker. It, it, you just have to put the ball in his hands. It's your job to figure out how, but I want the ball in his hands if if I'm with Duke because he he just makes things happen. Good block right there. Durwood gives you a little bit of time, Rashid. Way to step it up. And handoff goes to Wilkes on first and ten after they threw on the first two first down plays. They get two up to the 44 yard line. That brings up second and eight. Clayton White went on the tackle for NC State. Duke three and three and uh, after today they'll play no more road games in the ACC and uh, the combined record of the teams they play after today is a losing percentage as opposed to what they face so far which has got to be described as the heavy timber of this conference. Wilkes again. And not much running room. It's up to about the 42 picking up about three yards carry and it brings up third down. Here's what Duke has left after today. Rest of their ACC schedule at home and then their only road game at Vanderbilt a team that is still looking for its first victory and likely won't get it today at Georgia. But Clemson Maryland and North Carolina here at home. And all of those teams right now to this date that may change have losing records. Third down and six Duke trailing by ten at the NC State 42. Campbell, the lateral to the flats to Montgomery. 
And Montgomery is shot there by Marcel Huff. The nickel back forces a loss of the play back to the 46 yard line and brings the punting unit on for the Blue Devils again. Well, Montgomery's good, but it's difficult. I mean, if you scout Duke, you know that when he goes in motion in, in, in a naked backfield, they like to get the ball outside to him and block it. Well, number one, he's got a yard to go and he's got four to get before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Makes it tough. Morton back to kick. Corey Holt standing at the 10. Morton has to hurry this one. Holt calls for the fair catch. Ooh, at the 16 yard line. Boy, it is danger all the way when they line up both sides in punt formation. NC State by 10 after the 30 yard punt. They'll have the football deep in their own territory. Back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. NC State on top of Duke. 17 7. We're five minutes away from halftime and coming up at halftime. We'll have scores from around the country, our hot play of the week, and the Buick player of the week. All that and more coming up in just five minutes. Back upstairs to Steve and the good doctor. And Chris, that's the man who will bring you halftime, Charlie Frederick. Beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. They haven't had rain here in the Carolinas for at least 10 days, and it has been picture perfect weather. And that's what we're looking at today. First and 10, NC State leading 17 7. They're at their own 16 yard line. Jamie Barnett under center and he goes to Ray Robinson and Robinson is deluged. Ryan Stallmeyer, Nate Krill, Kevin Lewis, Chris Combs, they all meet. <laughs> well maybe that's why uh, NC State have been throwing on first down. <laughs> they, they try a little key breaker and see Combs. He's just a beast. He really is. He makes he forces the issue. You know a lot of guys make tackles on their back eight yards downfield. Combs dictates the tempo. He brings it. Bonafide Outland candidate and the first that they've had since Mike McGee, who is the only Duke player ever to win the Outland trophy. Barnett throws a little flare pass, goes to Chris Coleman complete, and he tries to jog ahead above the 20 yard line. Darius Clark on the stop. It's a gain of five. Great hands. I mean, that was, ball was low and thrown. He scooped it up with the paws and like his. Made Holt shows you what to do after the catch. See, good hands, really good hands. Spins around, keeps it alive. Is that Ric Flair? <laughs> it was he wants to be. I thought it was Scott Rooster Snyder, our on site producer. <laughs> Third down and five. NC State down by 10. Barnett throws a bullet this time again in the direction of Chris Coleman. It's going to be complete and blown ahead at forward progress to the 38 yard line. It'll be good for the first down. Uh oh, to the 28. They're warming Coleman up. Yep. And once he gets started, then Holt will be over the top sooner or later. A little bit below his average of 20 yards at reception, but uh, I mean, uh, he's. Uh, just strong. I mean, you know, he blocks well. He catches the short stuff. He can go deep. We talk a lot about Holt, but Chris Coleman is, is outstanding. Comes from a great program in Shelby, North Carolina. They were state champions at Crest High School. And the quarterback who found him a lot is his backup, Brian Hamlin. Robinson there is tackled, but we have a flag down at the 26 yard line. Robinson got a momentary, well, no gain on the play, but let's see what the flag is. A yard. Prior. As one would suspect on a running play in that area. It's the first penalty against NC State today. They are the least penalized team in the ACC. I mean, it has some miscues on teams, but they do play smart. Yep. Holding on the offense, 10 yards. And of course, Jim Knight. We always love to see Jim uh, after a bout of misfortune he had. And very serious situation where he suffered a heart attack about a year ago um, earlier this month at Chapel Hill but he was lucky to be within about 300 yards of a hospital and uh, quick response and he's back with us and he's one of the ACC's best hey, all of our prayers were answered on that here comes Robinson on first down out to the 20 yard line it is first down, but it is 22 to go after the holding penalty. 
Lamalier got in and tripped him up. That might have gone. That might have gone a long way. Todd Delamalier, who is uh, leads Duke in tackles, was a young man who we've just watched do nothing but make plays. Again, his father was a stud. He still is. I mean, yeah. the strongest guy, you know, a, a, a coach, any coaching staff in the country. But he, his son, is someone to be real proud of. Joe, of course, we're talking about as the tight ends coach at Duke, six-time All-Pro with Buffalo. Barnett to scramble on second down. The pass complete to Holt. Holt out on the corner and he's close to a first down out at the 38 yard line. He brought down there by Delamalor and Keenan Hall. Remember there was a holding penalty that backed it up first and 22. Boy, Devon Smith, the tight end, is going to get a great block on this to allow it to happen. Then we watch the Heisman candidate say, hey, I'm open. Give me the rock. He secures it. Now watch him work it. I mean, he just makes it look so easy, so smooth. We got a great block inside by Smith. And that's Devon Smith, the tight end. Might have been shaken up slightly. There's a timeout on the field now as Holt crosses the century mark for the 11th time in his career, his fourth, his fourth reception. But NC State now facing a big decision. A minute 40 left to go here in the first half. They're up by 10. They're facing the third and about one. They want to talk things over here. Try to keep this drive alive and put themselves in position for a score to end out the first half. They have a lot of options because Robinson, I think they have confidence now that Ray Robinson can get the job done if you run a lead. They've always got Jamie Barnett there for the option, and they can throw it on this. I mean, you've got two nice sized receivers that you can shoot out and throw a hitch route to it. Let's take a look at our scoring summary in the first quarter Duke picked up the ball on a bad snap on a punt and one yard later they punched it in B.J. Hill put Duke on top NC State would answer as they would recover a fumble and uh, knock it in for a 47 yard field goal in the second quarter Duke had uh, two possessions two punts but NC State came back with two touchdowns Ray Robinson for one Torrey Holt on a pass play from Jamie Barnett of 16 yards for another and that's where we are. NC State scoring 17 unanswered points after spotting Duke the first seven on the bad snap for the punt. And right now they're looking at third down and one. They're at the 37. They need the 38 in their own territory for a first down. The pitch to Robinson. Hits the corner, hits Stallmeyer and Shepard, and it's going to be close. Real close. And it depends on the spot that they give him here. Boy, right, Harold Jackson was in at fullback. And Harold came in and, and met both Stahlmeyer and Delamalor. They plug well. Scanlon, Combs up front. I mean, the big difference in this Duke defense and Duke in the past couple of years is how stout they've become at the point of attack. Duke takes a timeout because they think they've stopped them, and uh, the official indication is that they have. So it'll bring up fourth down, and Duke looking to save some time to possibly give Bobby Campbell some time to get the offense back down in order. A minute 29 left to go. The pageantry of ACC football on a beautiful mid October afternoon. Dory Holt. Four receptions, 100 yards, and a touchdown. What's he done so far? Well, second play from scrimmage. <laughs> Backed up at his own one yard line. Nice adjustment. Yeah, he worked over Lamar Grant that time for 41 yards. Then he takes Keenan Holly into the corner of the end zone for his scoring touchdown. That was his second pass reception of the day. The third is going to be a 27 yard hookup. This is under extreme pressure. Watch him come back. Yeah. And then make you miss. And Grant has to force him out of bounds. And of course, his fourth one just pulled us out to the 37 yard line. On the season, he does it all. Receptions, 20.2 average, 17.4 on punts, which is excellent. And he's, of course, rushed the ball at 15 2, and you've got to throw in also. He's thrown a 45 yard touchdown. Done it all. Yeah. <laughs> Drives the bus, passes out meal money. <laughs> the whole thing of this guy. Use uh, your offense. NC State's going to punt it away. Earwood is back to punt. Jamison is going to do the long snap. This is their second long snapper of the day. Gets a good one back there, and Earwood gets his best punt of the day out of there. 
And Hamilton is going to let it roll on the fair catch down to the 25 yard line. The clock rolls down to the 118 mark and stops as Duke will take over possession here in the second quarter. Coming up next week, we will head down to Winston Salem, North Carolina, and see the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Our first look at them and our first look at the North Carolina Tar Heels. Both teams trying to turn their seasons around. Uh, Wake Forest trying to recover from their loss to these Duke Blue Devils last week, and you'll see it at 12 noon. And for more on the game, log on to jpsports.com. Well, the latest on our upcoming matchup and news from around the league. Steve Martin, one on one. There's the pass. It is complete to the tight end. Mike Hart right at the hash mark, and he gets it up over the 45-yard line. It's a gain of about 20 yards on the play. They've had success. The time, a couple of times they've gone inside to the tight end. I think Mike Hart has really come on well. He, he's going to be a keeper. Uh, Duke has one timeout left. Out of the shotgun, Candy. Steps up, has some time, goes to the tight end again, Dupree, but not as successful, out to the 47-yard line. Wilson on the on the stop, it's a gain of about four. It'll bring up second down and six. Clock still moving under a minute. Duke saving that last time out. Got to take a shot deep. You got Montgomery, Tony Scott, top of the screen. Here comes Campbell. He's going to go in that direction. And Montgomery with a great catch. And Tony Scott drives him out of bounds. He's got the first down in NC State territory at the 41. Clock stops with 36 seconds. So they got the first. They got out of bounds. Yeah, Scott did his job. And kept him, kept him in front of him. Again, a nice throw. I mean, Campbell's settling this offense now. Trying to get a groove. Boy, that's a rope. Throws it real well. The key to that, Montgomery came back and met the football. First and ten. At the 42. Campbell back to throw. White putting pressure on. Down the hash again, and this one was intended for Flowers, but Scott had him step for step. Yeah, he missed it. Had him on the out and up. On the out and up, they set him up well. Tony Scott played the out well, and they switched receivers from Montgomery to Flowers. Ran the out and up, had the route open, missed him. That's the first miss of the day for Bobby Campbell. 62 yards for him so far today in six passes, five completions. And we've all been there. <laughs> Is that a hangdog yeah, look or what? Second down. Rolling left, Campbell. Campbell looks downfield and is complete to his tight end Hart again. And they've had good success this drive with Hart. That's his third completion of the day to the tight end, and it's down to the 27-yard line of NC State. Edric Smith on the tackle. Well, you know, Mike's unusual because you can put him out that flex position. You know, he runs good routes. 22 seconds left. Duke still with a timeout in their pocket. Moving the football. Campbell again. Pass incomplete off the hands of Montgomery. Harrison covering on the play for NC State. That stops the clock with 14 seconds left to go. And now a 14 and a timeout left. You've got a realistic chance to get two plays in. No, you do. Scotty didn't explode into that route. I, I don't know if he's nicked up or winded, but I mean, you're running a route on Lloyd Harrison. You're going to have to push him off. Lloyd's a good cover man. There's Scotty now trying to, trying to get some oxygen. And he stands out there or heads out there with Hart as the wideouts to the wide side. Second down, Campbell back to throw, has some pressure, throws to the flats, incomplete for Wilkes. And he was chased by Jason Perry to the sidelines. That stops the clock with nine seconds left to go. And Boy, he still may have two plays. If Wilkes can catch that, he had an angle. I mean, it was difficult on the trajectory of the ball, but if he could have put his paws on that one, I mean, this might have been a big one. He got a little X stunt up front. Ooh, Smith, Smith, Smithwick. Boy, he was tied up in there with Derek. That was a good battle. This is going to be a 45-yard field goal, so Duke is going to kick the field goal right now. They were late getting Lenhart on the field for the kick, and it was blocked. Lenhart's attempt from 45 is blocked. It may have been Man, that's huge. Tony Scott. Not only does he help you as a corner, 
But see, they have their starters on teams. I mean, Holt is on the putt coverage team, so I, I like that. I don't. I mean, when you're trying to win games, you ought to have your best on the field at all times. There's no such thing as trying to hide guys on special teams. Watch him come right inside, lay out, take the ball right off the heel. That's Clayton White. That's Clayton White. Yeah, White comes in. Nice snap. See the spin. Boy, that's nice. That is really nice. And they have three guys in the vicinity. Clayton White gets the block. That thwarts the Duke drive, and with five seconds left to go. Jamie Barnett likely will take a knee here and finish off the first half. He does, and the first half will roll to a close. Duke scores the game's first touchdown after a bad snap for a punt sets him up with the one. But since then, offensively, it's been all NC State. 17 to 7, and Charlie Frederick standing by with Michael Kane. Mike, the uh, kicking game giveth and it taketh away. Early on, you had a bad snap, cost you a touchdown, but then you get a pump block from Chris Coleman and then a field goal block right here at the end of the half. Well, you know, other than just some individual mistakes that we made in the kicking game over the weeks, we've played good in the kicking game, and uh, obviously they stepped up big in two, those two big situations right there for us. You've done a good job keeping, keeping uh, Richmond Flowers under control. They're going to their tight end a lot. Well, our defense has done a good job. We're playing good with our corners. We're able to get some pressure on their quarterbacks, and, uh, you know, we've given up some run some a little bit of run yards but they haven't gotten anything big and anything consistent if we can continue to play like we did you know we'll be in good shape Mike thanks a lot good luck in the second half Mike O'Kane goes to the locker room with his Wolfpack leading Duke 17 7 we'll be back in a few minutes with halftime scores highlights and more from Carter Finley Stadium brought to you by Nationwide Insurance for insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs Call a nationwide insurance agent today and get nationwide on your side. By Amico, you expect more from a leader and you get it. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Food Lion, extra low prices and more. By Red Roof Inns, where you'll find nice people and an honest value. For reservations at any Red Roof Inn, call 1-800-THE-ROOF or your travel agent. By Alltel, where computing and communications converge. All tell, always more than you thought. And by Century by Buick, a luxury car for everyone. NC State by 10 as we start the second half. Standing by with Duke coach Fred Goldsmith is Charlie Frederick. Coach, turnovers once again just killing you. What can you do about it? Well, you know, you play better. <laughs> But turnovers, you know, your quarterback's running the ball. He's, he's a runner. He wasn't stand by. You know, he got to hang on. But the, the big thing I'm concerned about mainly was the uh, 10 points in the kicking game. Uh, you know, letting him block a punt was set up a touchdown. And uh, it's in the field goal. The difference in the football game and protect. But we usually put so much emphasis into that. And uh, they did something to block the punt that we worked on all week. We'd seen them do all year. And we just got to be better football team than that and then try to do something offensively to drive a ball into the end zone. I mean, we've got us a one-yard TD drive. You know, you don't win that way. Coach, good luck to you in the second half. Coach Fred Goldsmith trying to rally his Blue Devils from a 10-point halftime deficit. Let's go back upstairs to Steve and Doc. Thank you very much, Charlie Frederick. 17-7, NC State leading Duke. We're getting ready for the start of the second half. And, of course, uh, NC State deferred their option to the second half, and they'll have the ball to start the second half of play, provided they can avoid turning over the kick. Perry is back there along on the play, and this is Jason Perry, who will back himself seven yards deep and not return this out. He'll stop right there, and that's where NC State will start at the 10, at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Up 17-7. Duke scored first after a bad snap on a punt. Gave them the ball at the one-yard line. They punched that in, and then NC State scored 17 unanswered points. Kicked it uh, after two, and then, of course, to the field goal set up by good field position. Then touchdowns in their next two series. One by Holt of 16 yards from Barnett, and the other by Robinson. But again, good field position. Look at the drives, 60 yards. They're at their own 40, and they're at the Duke 46. Well, what Duke needs is a turnabout of play in the third quarter. That has not been a good quarter historically for this year's team. Barnett back. Straight drop back off play action, and the pass is incomplete intended for a hold. And Ronnie Hamilton. No, that was Coleman, the intended Coleman. receiver. That's good coverage. Yep, Ronnie Hamilton, the freshman. Played by Ronnie Hamilton, who would be tested today. 
and he's not been shy about it. Again, want to see a little bit stronger fake to keep those backers in. Boy, that's good news for Duke. Anytime you can hit the quarterback, ball is up. Little contact. And this is what Coleman's a little upset about, but I like the coverage by Ronnie Hamilton. But you know they've hit, they've hit Barnett a couple of times, yeah, just as he's a tough released. guy. Second down and ten. Barnett directing traffic. As Butler and Robinson behind him, play action again. This time a gun downfield intended for Hole, or rather for Ryan Leak. And again, Hamilton covering on the play. And again, it's incomplete. Things up third down. So right now, first two plays of the drive, not too successful. Here's Barnett on the day, nine out of 17 and 138 with one touchdown, and he has not been picked off. No turnovers for the Wolfpack so far this afternoon. Jamie wanted Leak. He had Smith, his tight end, on the crossing route. Third down. And 10. All at the 20. First series for the Wolfpack in the second half. None of the fans still at the concession stand. There's a pass complete to Holt. Or rather to Coleman. And Coleman drops the football, but it's picked up by Holt. Holt on his way. Holt will score. Touchdown, Torrey Holt. Torrey Holt is concerned. Well, we just picked up a new spot for teamwork and teammates. What a compliment for Coleman that you thought it was Holt. I mean, that's the similarity between these two guys. The key is right inside there. See, they're able to double up on Combs. They got they got Combs doubled. That was the key. Then you see ball goes down. Holt, quickness, alert, and now the foot race. Because he can't afford to get caught from behind. Wow. Play covers 80 yards. The pass reception and the fumble recovery. Deskovich with the point after. And NC State explodes just like that. And who's at the center of the storm? Tory Holt. Unbelievable. Even when the ball doesn't go to him, that's right. He ends up with it. I mean, you know, that's just being an, an alert football player. This outstanding job after the catch by Coleman. So he switches hands on this, a little shake and bake. There's the strip. Looks like Holly with the strip. And then Holt, and when he sticks it out, now he's clowning. He realizes that he's going to score on this one. You know, the thing that's impressive, Doc, is that Holt is in the vicinity to throw a block. Yeah, I mean, he's, he sees his man there and he's going to throw a block. 27 yard pass connection to Holman, then a 53 yard fumble return by Torrey Holt. And he picked it up off the bounce in step as if it were planned all the way. So give 27 yards to Coleman on the catch, and then 53 yards to Torrey Holt. As he picked it up at the 47 yard line and ran the distance. Fred Goldsmith is saying, Did you see that? Fred's going over. Our, our third quarter woes. That's right. Opponents have scored 62 points in the third quarter on Duke this season, and NC State's off to a good start. This second half isn't even 30 seconds old. Richmond Flowers back to receive. Fred Goldsmith's going to get the ball back. Offensively for the Duke Blue Devils, but he didn't plan it this way. Passing him with a kick. This is Epperson at the nine. Epperson stood up, hit, driven back. Joe Johnson, first man on the scene, back up fullback. And that's where Duke will start first and ten. Here's what. Fred Goldsmith has had to decide between as far as Campbell and Romine is concerned. Campbell can get him down the field more. Romine can execute more of that behind the scrimmage type offense that they do like to throw. Try to get Scotty Montgomery involved early. It's going to be Campbell under center again. Came in on the fifth series of the first half and he's been here ever since. Campbell hands off to B.J. Hill. And Hill puts the ball on the ground but recovers himself at the 29 30 yard line. 
I like him. I really do. And you watch this young man try to secure it at the point of attack. See, he looks downfield. He's got great vision, nice block at the point. Now watch the strip. Ball gets loose right there. And he snatches it back and recovers it for Duke. Jason Perry got his hand in there. It's a gain of six, second down and four. See State showing blitz. They stay at home and Campbell rolls right. Fires a pass. Is it going to be caught? Yes, it is. Richmond Flowers at the 35-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. Looks like he's got it. What a catch by Richmond Flowers. The man has hands. Let's watch him. See the arm pump? So he makes you a little phony acceleration. Cuts it out. Looks back. Now watch the hands, then the feet, and the drag. Boy, that's nice. That is really nice. Bobby just flinged it out. Boy, that was... He had to be on top of that one to make that call. And Lloyd Harrison was there. And Campbell wouldn't show it to him. First and ten at the 35. Sheed in motion. Campbell, shovel pass Montgomery. And Montgomery breaks tackles and gets up to the 45-yard line. Brought down on the play by Edric Smith. Scotty in his own right averages close to seven yards a carry. Now inside, you're going to see Montgomery come underneath. He's trailing, coming right in here is where you want to be. Ball's got to be right at that point. It's got to be the exchange point. There he gets it. Now watch the move. Keeps it square. Again, Scotty the playmaker. Well, that thing almost fell apart at the pitch because the bar Fisher was right in the territory. Here comes B.J. Hill, and Hill in a nice opening play, and Duke starting to put their ground game to work as we thought they would to the NC State 41-yard line. Nice gain on the play of about seven yards. Great push up front. Watch the left side. You see White, and you see Dupree. Roller blocking right in there. See, that's the alley. There's the guys on the, on the deck. This has been something that's happened pretty much at will by Duke up front. Dupree has been a battering ram at the tight end spot. It's a gain of 13, actually. It's going to be first and 10 at the NC State 42. Wolfpack now showing blitz, and they come with two linebackers. Pass complete to Montgomery. He slips a tackle, and they're going to mark him good for the first down at the 32. Steve, I really like when you have Montgomery going upfield. I mean, some of the things they do behind the line of scrimmage are this is neat. You, you pick up yardage within the route. You give him the ball so he can catch and run, and it's all, all positive yardage. Campbell hit his first five. He's nine out of 12 on the day and 101 yards. And they measure it. It's going to be a first down. So Campbell moving his team. He started at his own 24-yard line. And we're on the seventh play of the drive. Last four plays have been first down plays for Duke. Blue Devils ignoring NC State's early score. Momentum. Momentum has a lot to do with this NC State now on their heels. Rolling left is Campbell who throws with the right hand. Sets up. Cotton puts him in the other direction. Campbell throwing across the green for Flowers. Touchdown Duke! Now, there's an old lineman downfield. That happens that the first thing I worry about. And there no, are no flags. And they are lucky. I mean, he, he had him, he had Montgomery the first time, but he was late on it. Then he went around, you think, are oh, one of those big guys going to work their way upfield and have you lose it? Well, they didn't. That's a good operation. Playmaker, Bobby Campbell. First down to the last five plays. See it again. Well, this takes a lot of time. See Smithwick, the offensive line, string of pearls right there, hat on hat. Then he decides to change direction. And he's able to find. Richmond Flowers downfield for the score. Sims Lenhart finds the uprights for the extra point. And Duke gets right back into this thing. They're down by 10, 24, 14. Timeout on the field as Richmond Flowers thought, uh, thinks it over. Bobby Campbell is happy with the turn of events. And the Blue Devils trail by 10. Coach Goldsmith and company have decided to go with him here in the second half. He's made plays. He's driven this Duke offense with some production, they change the offense a little bit, trying to get the ball downfield. Here, nothing is there. Then he creates. Gets a long throw. Watch Richmond Flowers with the catch and score. Just like that, Duke is back in this ballgame. 
Boy, he could have picked a, had his pick of Montgomery or Flowers. Good concentration by Flowers. Good concentration by the Duke offensive lineman. You watch for the flag downfield and the possibility of a lineman getting down there and releasing. They did. But they held their ground and Campbell delivered the mail. His second touchdown pass of the season, first of the afternoon. And this is Jason Perry carrying the kickoff out of the end zone. And Perry is brought down. Luke Roush on the tackle at the 20 yard line on a 20 yard return and that's where NC State will take it over their lead still fairly comfortable 10 points but on their last series they didn't do an awful lot with the football let's see if they decide to do what Duke uh, did the last time around and establish the run. You know they say sometimes uh, what's more important to be lucky or to, be, or to just be good <laughs> I think in this game you need a bit of both. Both teams have had their measure of luck NC State probably the better share of it of course Torrey Holt picking up the fumble of Chris Coleman and returning at 53 yards for a score last time NC State had the ball. I think Charlie Frederick is a visionary. Our guy on the sidelines. He must be it's his middle name Ray Robinson straight ahead trying to get to the line of scrimmage and Duke has been most stingy against the run this afternoon. Now we've had a chance to watch the development of Bob Trout's group on defense and how they have gotten stronger bigger. You know, within the offseason, there's Scanlon, uh, really the only senior that uh, on their starting group that they'll be without next year. They could really be nasty on defense. But at the same time, they have 203 career starts in that defensive unit mm -hmm. coming into today's game. Second down and 10 for all intents and purposes. Barnett rolls back, ran on a safety blitz, but he gets the tight end, Fouché. And Fouché is headed down the sidelines. Clark. Knocks him out of bounds at the 46 yard line. That's Fouché's first reception of the year. The senior from Chapel Hill has overcome a torn Achilles. Well, that's the way to get on the books. Frustration for Duke. You can't get any more pressure on the quarterback. Boy, Barnett. A nice no block by Coleman. That was smart not to make contact. And you see the pressure again all over him. Fouché again, real nice with the catch and run. Heads up play by Chris Coleman not to pick up a clip. Ricky Collins is in as a wide out now for NC State. Play action for Jamie Barnett. Slips, fires, complete to Ryan Hamrick. The former high school quarterback who used to throw passes at Chris Coleman at Crest High School in Shelby. He's in at Duke territory at the 35 yard line. It's Jamie, a 17 yard game. You're right, Steve. Jamie Barnett, rifle man. Watch him. Kind of stumbles, not throws the dart. Six foot, 200 pounder, he can throw it. Ball right on the numbers. And again, constant pressure of the Blue Devils. Stallmeyer was in the vicinity when he let the ball go. Last play for 18 yards, first and 10 at the 35 of Duke. Barnett on the option to pitch to Robinson. And Robinson pulled down by Verdun. Along with Keenan Holly. It'll be a gain on the play of about four. We may have an injured player for Duke. Darius Clark getting up slowly, but he's going to be okay. And there's the true freshman, Ray Robinson from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Rushed for 3,300 yards in the last two years in high school. I want you to watch 70 and 93. Now you talk about a rumble. Now see this is what it's about is hand to hand combat. <laughs> you see those two guys in there. That's the beauty of this game. Either you don't get a chance to pick it up often but you know guys in the trenches. Planted each other like tulips. <laughs> Second down and seven. That's a war there. Barnett off play action. Barnett it is complete. And it's brought down by Ricky Collins. Collins, a redshirt freshman from Danielsville, Georgia. Well, one thing that's impressive about NC State and its receivers is how they catch the ball with their hands. See, I like the acceleration. See, he created space. Now he plants, see that all hand, eyes pinned right on the stripes. That's technique there. That's technique. Very well done. Down to the 10 yard line, a 22 yard hookup to the redshirt freshman, talking with Michael Kane on the sidelines. His first down, they, can they get a first down inside the one? It looks like they can. Oh, they're right at the 10-yard line. Barnett 
Calls his own number and runs into Brian McCormick, but falls ahead to the eight yard line. McCormick, they're glad to have him back. He was injured, missed some games, but he has uh, made his presence known. You know, I think they can get another first down. But, uh, the chain measurement looks close enough down there, so it's inside the one. There's McCormick, battled off an early season injury. That gave Kendrell Knight some playing time, and he's sharing it at that outside linebacker. So not all injuries are totally bad. Gain of one, second and nine. Barnett against pressure. Going for Holt in the end zone. It is incomplete. Actually caught, but caught out of bounds. Lamar Grant covering on the play. Man, if you had any plan for Jimmy Barnett after the ball game, forget about it. Because he'll be in ice. <laughs> that kid has been down all, all day long. Uh, he has the right idea with the ball just a little long, and you can credit Chris Combs once again for applying the pressure on Barnett. Now watch it. Holt with the grab. Good call by the Stripers. Good coverage. See that? That's what you want to do as a defensive player. You want to hit the quarterback. And that's the hit specialist right there. Chris Combs had four tackles for loss against Wake last week. Key third down and nine. Ball at the nine and a half. State can get a first down. It is overthrown and looks like a communication on the pattern between Holt and Barnett. He threw it out. Barnett, or rather Holt, ran it in. And Lamar Grant was in the vicinity. And you got to give a, I mean, this is a, this is a plus for Duke. When your offense scores, and then you come back and get a, a stop. If, if they can limit it to three, then you know you start to inch your way back into it. Deskovich getting ready to kick. Interesting story. Had to be talked into kicking by his fraternity brothers. And he's on to kick the field goal. And this will be from 25 yards out of the hold of Ryan Hammer. He has not missed one this season, and he is true to form here. So the kick of 25 yards by the walk-on kicker from Charlotte, North Carolina, puts NC State up over Duke. 27-14 here in the third at Raleigh. University. The junior from Morganton, North Carolina, has a 3.24 grade point average in parks, recreation, and tourism management. Congratulations to Scott Yearwood, our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, and Charlie Frederick here in Finley, in Carter Finley Stadium, in Raleigh, actually, the capital city of North Carolina, and North Carolina State up to a 27 14 lead off Dan Deskovich's. 25 yard field goal. Kent Passingham getting set to kick off following. So each team has had the ball once, actually, NC State twice. They've been scores at the end of each drive. Yeah, picked up 10 points for Duke. They have seven and a semi stop. The game is still at that uh, uh, point of a ball game where either team that comes up with a stop and a score can get in the driver's seat. And it's Flowers taking it at the 20 off the short kick, but he doesn't get very far. And he's brought down by Tony Thompson. Well, coming up next Saturday, we will head to Grove Stadium and Wake Forest at uh, Winston-Salem. The defense, Ebenezer Ecubon, part of a revitalized Tar Heel defensive unit, and the Demon Deacon defense makes you pay for mistakes. They did so against Clemson and did very well. Both teams don't love loss. When they meet at Grove Stadium, that's next Saturday on many of these same stations at 12 noon. First and 10. Don't forget to hit the internet at jp.com for all the updates. And of course, Steve Martin's one on one. You never know what I'm going to write about. Neither do I. Latavius Wilkes and Duke again. Trying to grind out some yardage on the ground to get it out to the 34 yard line before Clint Johnson, a sophomore from Decatur, Georgia, comes up with the stop. Uh oh. Is that our director? No. Dave Bruchette? Is that him? The you think Dave you could do five push ups? I don't know if he can do five, but he better be ready to do 27. Heaven help that guy if <laughs> State scores again. <laughs> With one strong mascot. Second down and six. Campbell to Latavius Wilkes. Wilkes has some running. Oh. Gets past Perry. And is brought down finally by Lloyd Harrison, but a nice gain on the play. Man, make my day. 
It's 21, just, maybe 24 yards. And again, they, they're starting to pick on that left side. Why wouldn't you? Lenny Friedman and West White, big tight end, do free in it. Look at the push. See, there's the angle. There's there's the hole, and there's the shake and bake. Real nice. Again, a number of backs to keep them fresh. B.J. Hill, Emerson, Wilkes. Strong attack by Duke. 22 yards on a carry by Latavius Wilkes. Sets him up first and 10 at the NC State 44-yard line. Campbell sprinting out. Fires. Pass Flowers. No. Flowers with great concentration, but Harrison was there to break it up. Well, Lloyd played the ball well, and that's the key to, to deep routes as a defensive back. <clears throat> you want to be in good position in relationship to the receiver. Next, you want to find the football. I see Bobby doesn't really set up. He kind of tossed that on the run. Really, Lloyd, I don't know how he figured this one out, but Lloyd gets a good glance and gets up and almost had a pick. That was outstanding. We're talking about a pass defense that is second in the ACC. They've got 13 interceptions this far this season. And Steve, the Bobby sets up and plans. He might have hit that. Here comes the handoff to Wilkes, and there's nothing doing. He is stood up and stopped by LeVar Fisher. LeVar Fisher, the true freshman. Another one of those great running backs. Played some linebacker, had 147 tackles. 34 for loss. I mean, this guy is disruptive. And Beaufort, oh yeah, North Carolina. Third down coming now for Duke. And danger of seeing their drive stall here at the NC State 44 yard line. They trail by 13. Wilkes in motion. Blitz coming for NC State. The flare pass to Flowers. Looking for space and he's hauled down. He got about five yards on the play. Corey Smith made the initial hit. Several others in on the play as well. Cecil McCurdy also in on the tackle. As Flowers gets five, brings up fourth down. Well, they never get any deception. They don't get the benefit of it because when they go to no backs, I mean, everybody I think realizes it's going to be one of two things. They run the fold. Underneath, he has to go down and makes a nice catch. Smith Wick out with a nice block, but at this point, you need to go up here. He's running back here, and that's not going to get you a first down. Duke takes time out to think over fourth and six as they have the ball on the NC State 41, trailing by 13. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. Carter Finley, NC State, and Duke going at it, and Duke has decided to go for it on fourth down and six. They're at the 41, close to the 40-yard line of NC State. They need the 34 and a half for this first down. Big play in this third quarter for Bobby Campbell and the Duke Blue Devils. I love this. He's got space up top. Montgomery is split wide. Long count coming from Campbell. Hoping to get fourth down over and a foot. That makes the decision a little bit easier. State trying to stay disciplined. And they get to the lay of game penalty. So what Fred Goldsmith decided to do told Bobby Campbell go for the long count see if we can draw him off sides and get a fourth and one that makes the decision a little bit easier. Now they'll kick the ball away. Well I don't blame him. Take a shot at it. Watch the end of this. It, it got feisty. Now is this a snap or not. You now the hands move up ball comes out. I'm surprised they didn't knock that ball down. Yeah. You see Brian and would have been interesting to see. Was it a, would it have been a fumble or not? That would have been a that would have been a decision that would have been revisited somewhere else. Oh yeah. Here is Morton. Fair catch called for. We haven't seen Tory Holt return a punt today. So you credit the Duke special teams for being able to keep the ball non-returnable this afternoon. 18 yard line is going to be the line of scrimmage as we Dip into the ACC archives. We want to see one of the best games ever played between these two. It happened back in 1988. Chris Williams had put the Wolfpack up 7 0 on that touchdown, but look out. Duke is going to come roaring back. Roger Boone scores. The game's tied at 7. We go to the third quarter. Charles Davenport. He scrambles and puts NC State up 40 to 25. 57 seconds remaining. Anthony Dillwig hits Clarkston Hines to make it 43 40, but Damon Hartman 
kicks a 37 yard field goal that ties it up and that's how it finished. We may be in for similar heroics this afternoon. But this is Raymond Robinson on first down and Ray gets out over the 20 and out to about the 21 yard line Ryan Stallmeyer in on the stop. So our ACC archives may forecast something here. Let's Wake Forest trying to respond to their loss last week to Duke. Georgia holding on. It's a big score there. South Carolina, that is a huge upset in the making in Columbia. Brad Man. Scott with his job on the line. Ohio State cruises on. And so does Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. And coming up on second down here as NC State lines up over the football. Back to the Maryland score for a moment. You know, Maryland is, uh, has not had an offensive score now. That would be six quarters since they made a move to uh, go to youth at the quarterback spot. And of course, uh, NC State has had uh, great success against top 15 teams. They are one of only three in the country that have beaten the top 15, or actually two top 15 teams. The first of those, well, six interceptions did the trick as they stopped Florida State 24 to 7 and held them three scoreless quarters, which is amazing. And of course, the defense came to play against Syracuse as well. You know, they've beaten them five times that they played them, and the last two have been thrillers. This one, of course, no contest at Cardner Finley as the defense came to play, and they downed Donovan McNabb, who was, of course, another Heisman hopeful, or was at least till that point in time. Two top 15s have fallen on this field. Michael Kane wants to get an ACC win on the wall here. Try to make up for the loss last week to Georgia Tech. ACC battle is an interesting one and Georgia Tech and Virginia will turn another interesting page in it this afternoon. There's Jamie Barnett junior from Roxborough North Carolina. Three and a half seasons as a starting quarterback. Announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Barnett steps up, fires a pass to Coleman. And Coleman catches it in traffic in a double team. And out to the 30 yard line. Chris Combs says, I chase, I chase, and I don't get. He won't back off, though. He won't wear it down. I mean, he's a pit bull. He just keeps coming. Coleman shows you again. Great hands. Ball slightly thrown behind him. Now watch him. Watch him find the sweet spot here in the zone. Right there. Waits on it. And we'll see constant pressure on Jamie Barnett. He steps up. Sanders. Back to live action. First and ten from the 31-yard line. Play action for Barnett. The pass overthrown for Leak. Eric Leak, sophomore from Marshville, North Carolina. Ronnie Hamilton is in the vicinity. That was one of those my bads because he was there. He ran a nice route. And you know, even interesting, we get a chance to look at the whole field and to have watched Torrey Holt run his route on the backside. He was not the primary guy. He knew it, but you couldn't tell. I mean, that's really what you talk about greatness overall. For a wide receiver. You watch him on play away. This kid blocks. He's on special teams. Runs hard every play. And recovers fumbles for touchdowns of 53 yards. <laughs> right. Does it all. And he wasn't the primary receiver on that play either. Ray Robinson bounces out to the left. Bounces his way into the secondary. Darius Clark will drive him out of bounds. But not before he's picked up a good 25 to close to 30 yards down to the 35 yard line of Duke. Biggest play of the day for Raymond Robinson. There you go. Watch it once again. There you see Smith with a nice block at the point of attack. And one thing Robinson can do, he can scoot it. You give him some room, he'll make you pay. But this bad boy is a coming back. Yes, it is. So take the 34 yards out. And it's 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Bad break for NC State. The 34 yarder by Ray Robinson comes off the board. And instead it goes back the other way due to the holding penalty. Their second penalty of the day but probably the most damaging. Yeah that would have been rough. Rough on Duke. That would have given NC State some momentum. We still have a little under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. Each team has managed 
to score. Juwan Clark now is in a tailback after that long run by Ray Robinson. Second down and long yardage. And going down is Barnett. He'll throw as he went down. And now Jim Knight is checking the line judge to make sure it's not intentional grounding. Did he have a man over there? And uh, he's checking and he says yes. And so it's incomplete. He gets again complete on that one. Yes, he did. Butler was in the vicinity. <laughs> Butler was in the That's, same zip code. That is so heads up. <laughs> so heads up by Barnett. Again, this is a jailbreak. See Combs right at the line of scrimmage. Nice hand, slaps him down, gets a hold of him. And the incompletion, man, would have tied Combs for the lead with, with uh, tackles for losses in the Duke proud history on defense. Average yards to go on third down. Wolfpack leading in this ball game, strangely enough, but they've had a lot of third and longs today, and this is another third and 14, and now they take a timeout. And they have only one timeout remaining. So Michael Kane shakes his head and says, Those are like gold. You better have a good reason to stop this one. <laughs> And you can check out jpsports.com and get all the information you need on our upcoming matchup of the week. We have assorted columns and notes and whatnot and ugly people such as myself, but then the pretty guys like Doc Walker and I don't know how wait, Charlie wait, Frederick hold it, hold it. got his picture in, in color. color. But must have been Snyder. It's all there, including our broadcast schedule, which next week takes us to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and North Carolina and Wake Forest, one of the grand old rivalries in the ACC. It is a big game for both, and Wake, of course, leading Maryland. That should be fun. Next week should be a lot of fun. North Carolina trying to get its feet underneath it, and it looks like they have after some early stumbles and yeah. big, you know, big time injuries. Oscar Davenport back. Well, that's the key. You know, when you, when you when they get their quarterback going, and Oscar, and they get settled, once the momentum starts to pick up, that's right. Look out. And that's a key game for that momentum to go for both of those teams. And we'll have it for you on most of these same stations at 12 noon. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents ACC football. Right now, NC State looking at third and 14. They're down to one timeout. We have 450 left in the third. NC State leading 27-14. Out of the shotgun, Jamie Barnett. Robinson is his lone setback. Big rush on. Steinball puts the pressure on. Barnett will carry, and Stallmeyer will flatten him at the 23. <laughs> and that's oh, lost yardage right there. It's so nice to watch the good ones work. You know, in open field against a guy like Barnett, I and mean, he can make people miss, but Stallmeyer just beams in his like radar. And when he gets to you, you're going to know it. You will remember who hit you. More adventure here on a punt for NC State. Of course, you remember in the first quarter they had a snap over the punter's head. Yearwood though gets a good snap from Jamison. Big rush close, on. Close. Luke Roush almost got the kicker, and the ball is down at the 46-yard line of NC State. So the Wolfpack will get good field position, or the uh, Blue Devils will get good field position on the 30-yard punt by Scott Yearwood. So NC State down to their last timeout. Something that may come to haunt them, especially if Duke is able to drive down and score. And scoring has been pretty much the rule of thumb when you've had the ball this second half. Duke missed their last time down. And Campbell has looked good in the second half, as Rashid in motion. Rolling that side, Wilkes with the rush. But he's brought down from behind. And hit on the play by Darius Bryant. He's a redshirt freshman from Suffolk, Virginia. And Clint Johnson also in on the play. They like Bryant. They like those two kids. They think that, uh, you know, in time, Bryant's going to be someone real stout that can nestle down that, uh, that A gap. And Johnson has been uh, hampered by a hip injury, so he's seeing his first significant action today. Second down and seven. Campbell rolling out. The throw for Montgomery incomplete. Scott covering. And that'll bring up third down. Well, NC State was so physical 
on that play right at the point of attack. I mean, they started to, in this point of the game, you mentioned the weather. It is nice, but it can get kind of warm when you're out there and you receive some snaps. Now, watch how they get upfield. See, this is great. See, right there, when you, that, get it, you get in the throwing lane of the quarterback, and that's really disruptive. That, that play was not designed to pick up pressure. Third down and seven. Duke trailing by 13. They're a yard shot at midfield. NC State showing a blitz off the corner from White, and he's coming. Duke picks it up. Campbell scrambles out. Campbell for the first down, and Perry knocks him out of bounds at the 34-yard line. And it's going to be a nice gain on the play of about 12 or 17, actually. So Bobby Campbell with a big third down conversion, and that moves Duke into NC State territory. Bobby might have played himself into a starting role here. He has really come in and put some stability on this Duke offense. They're balanced now. They've been able to run the ball inside. He's made some big throws. Now he just needs to get his team in the end zone. First and 10 from the Wolfpack, 34. Flowers and Montgomery are split wide to the wide side of the field. Rolling that way is Campbell. He'll hit Montgomery, but he fumbled it. Incomplete at the 29. Well, they really it, no, they're going to say he got it. Got to sell it. He nope. didn't sell it well enough. No, I didn't. They Linesman see? comes in and said, no, that's not true. <laughs> got to send him out, the, out, out on the west. Some acting classes. That was weak. You know, and he got up and really started pumping that thing. Hey, man, I got it. You know, he might have sold himself. <laughs> he didn't believe it. You see it? Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> Take another look. There you see inside. Now watch it. He has it. It loses on the ground. Just slight. Now watch the sell job. Guy's waving no. No, see, Scotty, no, you're nah, strong you gotta, enough in that. You, you got to really. get animated, man. You got to make them believe. You should have gone over and congratulated Richmond Flowers. Yes, and said, hey, did you see that? Is that great? Second down and 10 at the 30, actually the 34. Campbell, three-step drop to Montgomery. He dropped. Ball was there. Tony Scott yeah. covering. Yeah, that, that was clean. Well, you know, there's not much breeze here, even though it's a very nice day, but uh, down on that football field, it gets hot. The air temperature is listed at about 70, but you get down on the field, you add 15 degrees. To say that there is no breeze is illustrated by the flags. Very good. Thank you. Third down. Another big third down play, third and 10 for Duke. The NC State 34, down by 13, pass to the tight end, Hart. That little flare gets him down to the 32, but it won't get him a first. Gain of four yards on the play. It'll bring up fourth down and six, and it brings Sims Lenhart on the field. Well, Hart has been there for him. Maybe he didn't get his number called early enough in this drive. This is fourth reception. Of the day, this is going to be a kick of 48 yards. But Sims Lenhart's no stranger to those. Six of ten field goal successes have been from 40 or deeper. Here comes the kick. It is good. From 47, Sims Lenhart makes it 27-17, and the Blue Devils convert on a drive that started at their own 46-yard line. Bigfoot. Well, Linhart, he likes that. He was four for six in that range. He's had a 151 yards, and they have confidence in him, and maybe that, that has to affect how you call plays. Well, he had two kicks this year, 50 or better. You listed one, the one he had it in against Florida State, and then we saw one against Georgia Tech. The big guys know it. There they go. Yeah. Wes White says, piece of cake. Lenhart for 47. Yep. Got to get excited about points. And especially the way the second half has been for uh, the Blue Devils throughout the season. You want to get real excited about points on the board. So that field goal at the 258 mark pulls Duke to within 10. As they trade field goals on the last two possessions. And Fred Goldsmith now <laughs> instructs the Duke cheerleaders. They're doing what I'm doing. Let the mascot do it. Everybody does it. See, we ought to have everybody in the truck doing push-ups on scores. Our producer, Scott Snyder, wouldn't make it to 10. Oh, you think he could get 10? All right, I'm going out on that. I said five. 
Well we'd have to have Charlie Frederick lead us in and in the end zone but right now it's Duke getting ready to kick off and this game now hanging there with momentum. Duke has stopped NC State their last possession came back and scored three. Now can they stop them again here before the third quarter ends and get to within or underneath that 10 point buffer that the Wolfpack have erected. They have not been able to find Torrey Holt in the seven. There is Harry downing at eight yards deep. Good you mentioned his name because I was just I, as you said that I was thinking well we better figure it in the Holt factor. And Sims Lenhart with that kick is now tied with Doug Peterson for the career lead in field goals in his career. He has 10 in his career over 40 yards and 37 field goals all told. Great career for an All-American. And uh, in the next tryouts, NC State. <laughs> Boy, they had a, a Deskovich maybe uh, the guy who, man, who, who takes the position for the rest of the year. He's done a pretty good job. They're always looking. First and ten from the 20. Jamie Barnett off play action. Little screen pass to Robinson, and it is incomplete. Maybe the toughest play in football offensively to orchestrate. You know, a smooth screen, especially if you are yeah. a freshman running back. Yeah, yeah, you are. And if you don't do it a lot, it's it's, it's tough. And that was something that Michael Kane brought up yesterday in his meeting with us that he. He worried about you know he wasn't really worried necessarily about Robinson's skills as a running back. He was worried primarily about how rookie running backs or true freshman running backs adapt to their pass routes mm -hmm. within the offense. And blitz pickup. Exactly. Second down. Hand off to Robinson and this is what he does best. But Todd Delamalor with a great shoestring tackle stops him at the line of scrimmage. Starting to feel the lull. Now, what one play, one team needs a big play, and that, that can probably close the door. Boy, I see Scanlon in there. I mean, really, I mean, he gets crushed, but it's two guys, and he kind of creates a pile, and that's his job. Delama Lyric comes in and you know makes a nice save. Well, you know, the tackles for for Duke, with the exception of Combs, you got Shepard and Scanlon don't pick up an awful lot of tackles for linebackers. The opposite side of Combs usually get a lot of chances. Third down and long. Blitz by Delamalor, and that causes the pass that was incomplete intended for Raymond Robinson. No, that's double digits now for Jamie Barnett to where he's been on the turf. When your quarterback has popped on that turf, you know, more than 10 times, and that's dangerous. And this guy, a week ago, he's out because of a concussion. And so he's tough. But you're also not protecting him well. Arnett's missed his last four passes, and none of them have been thrown in the direction of Torrey Hall. Got this. They pump and they block it, and it is returned down to the three-yard line. Is that going to be Darius Clark? No, it's not. That's Covering on the play, Moyer. Alonzo Moyer, the senior from Homewood, Illinois. The punt is blocked. That's the second disaster to hit NC State on a punt today. Luke Roush blocked the punt. Yeah, that and Moyer good. picked it up. Department Steve, yeah, that was a break. When he dropped it, I don't know, even had he not dropped it, I think that one may have been blocked. So Duke has another opportunity to start a drive at the NC State one and a half yard line and a chance to pick up a score here that would tighten this thing up considerably. Wilkes is lone setback. Krill is in as a tight end. Wilkes is into the end zone for a score. The Duke Blue Devils have just made things interesting. They score to cut the margin to four on the block punt. Luke Roush on the block, Moyer on the recovery, Wilkes on the touchdown, and Duke on the scoreboard. Folks here going, hey fellas, we got to stay fair here. We'd like to enjoy ourselves after this. Funnel cakes don't taste good after things like this. Lenhart with the kick. The point after is good. And Duke is within a three point margin here. Latavius Wilkes scoring the touchdown, his sixth career touchdown, and his third of this season. And there are a lot of smiles on the Duke sideline right now. Blue Devils last week shook off the darkness of a 21 game ACC losing streak and has said it's time to get into this ACC race. Well, they did with that win over Wake Forest. 
Yep. There's the yep. there's the snap in the first play, the first series of the game that put State in their first hole. And of course, B.J. Hill would go over and score from one yard out. And there's seven points. And then another seven to the kick team. Yeah, Coleman with the block. Yep. And this is NC State. They get the recovery. That set up a field goal. This one being from Deskovitz. That made it 7-3. Then here comes this block punt. This is the fumble on the reception from the snap. Moyer will pick it up after Roush blocked it. And Campbell gives to Latavius Wilkes and he'll cash it in. So that's what the kicking game on both sides of the ball has produced or not produced today. Produce some anxious moments for both teams. And some points for the Duke Blue Devils. 14 in, in fact. Actually, we've had 17 points scored total by both teams on mistakes that can be attributed to the punting game. Duke has scored 10 minutes and 10 points in the last minute and 17. Probably also the longest period that we've gone without Torrey Holt being a factor in this offensively. So that's the one thing that I think NC State needs to correct and correct in a hurry is to get him back involved offensively. So Duke gets right back in here with 10 unanswered points. And here comes Perry out from four yards deep and he is hit by Delamalor and spins and is dropped by Norcus at the 17 yard line. So Perry brings it out and that's where NC State will start first and 10. You mentioned Delamalor on the kickoff team. See starters on teams equals success. Well, we saw Chris Coleman block a punt and there is a, a guy we haven't heard an awful lot from here in the second half. He did return a fumble off a 27 yard pass reception to Chris Coleman and he returned it for 53 yards since then he's not seen the football. Yep, no catch. And that was 30 seconds into the second half. We have about 90 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Barnett on play action. Guns one to the left flats and it's Coleman complete to the 30 yard line good for a first down and completion hookup for 12 yards Ronnie Hamilton cover. We have a flag back on the 14 yard line it's a hold against NC State and it'll bring this one back this is the second big gainer they've had brought back today. Boy, that's a less good pressure when you can pick up a holding penalty. On a five step drop back, that means that you are you bringing it. Jim Knight with the call. Holding offense half the distance from the spot of the foul. Repeat the day. So repeat first down and half the distance from the spot of the foul. Let's see if we can pick it up. AC Combs with the strong inside the, the club move in. That might have been it. You got to figure that he's somewhere. He, he's a candidate, the leading candidate to. Yeah. To pick it up. Talking about Knutson there, right? There's a. Uh, Bring it back. So Barnett set with adversity back at his own seven yard line. First and 22 from the seven. Butler and Robinson are his setbacks. Back to throw Barnett right over the middle. It is incomplete and nearly intercepted. Intended for his tight end, Smith. Keenan Holly almost picked it off off the deflection. Well, it's always smart to throw to your tight end. I mean, you can never go wrong in that instance. Never. That was just never, never, ever. From a former tight end. Ever. Well, once you're a tight end, you're always wrong. a tight end. There again, a little play fake, and then you watch Smith come around the corner again, make that 12, 12 times now. Barnett has been on the turf. But the record book will only show two sacks today. Second down and 22. NC State at their own seven. Barnett looking left. Robinson in the flats. Gets by Holly and is brought down at the 27 yard line. Close. Gain of 20. Kevin Lewis has to bring him down with Lyle Burdeen. He is close. He is close to that first down. I like Ray Robinson. There he comes out, little leak route. Nice touch pass by Barnett. And now he's home free. Makes a guy miss. I mean, to be a back worth your salt, you've got to make people miss in the open field. 
Watch the pressure. See, make that 13 times. And there he is again. Down to the 28. It's a gain of 21. Jones. Third down and one. There's the third down conversion for NC State. Four out of 11. Full house backfield now, and Robinson gets the call. And it looks like he's got it, but Fred Goldsmith says across the way, no. They'll need a spot here. And there's applause rippling from the Duke sideline that says that this is not a first down. Fred's got that lean going. <laughs> Leaning in on it. <laughs> See, we're getting ready to wrap up this third quarter. Michael Kane very concerned as they bring the chains out here on this third down play and if they aren't successful it's a first down NC State you can't see it from that but Jim Knight clear with the signal by half a football first and ten at the twenty eight yard line. So Robinson gets the necessary yardage for the first down and that keeps NC State in command of the ball at their own 28 and we are facing the end of the third quarter. A very eventful third quarter that sees NC State's lead shrivel from 10 to just three. A fourth quarter of excitement's coming up so stay with us. ACC football is brought to you in part by Red Roof Inns, where you'll find nice people and an honest value. For reservations at any Red Roof Inn, call 1-800-THE-ROOF or your travel agent. And by Bell South Mobility DCS. Jefferson Pilot Sports presents ACC football. Today's game, the Duke Blue Devils and the NC State Wolfpack from Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh. NC State in the lead 27 24 Steve Martin here with Doc Walker and Charlie Frederick at Carter Finley Stadium on a beautiful day State Fair weekend first weekend of the North Carolina State Fair and a heavy crowd in this area on Trinity and Blue Ridge roads Jamie Barnett at the controls of the NC State offense having picked up a key first down first and 10 at the 28 the pass complete and guess who Torrey Holt make a miss out near midfield. A 22 yard hookup Ryan Stallmeyer comes over in pursuit to get the tackle. He did not catch a ball in the third quarter. He recovered a fumble and ran it back for 53 yards and a score. But Barnett was happy to hook up for him with his fifth time today. And they got it done with play action. Then you get a roll. Nice strike. Now here's when the fun starts. <laughs> nice little move. That's two guys that missed. There's three. Simply the best. First and ten. And off to Robinson, and Robinson moves people ahead to the 45 yard line. Close to six game, six yards on the carry. And bringing him down, Darius Clark and also Kevin Lewis. Let's take a look at our Duckhead third quarter stats. NC State with 312 yards in the air from Jamie Barnett today. But not all of it's gone to Torrey Holt. Look at the rushing yards NC State's been held to. And of course, their minus yardage has to be figured in there as well. At the century mark for Duke. Mistakes in the kicking game responsible for 17 points. 14 for Duke and 3 for NC State. Second down and 4. Robinson. Not much there and in the middle that is Eric Scanlon making the stop on the seventh play of this drive. Scanlon Combs at the bottom of the pile. Delamalier Stalmar not far behind. We haven't talked to a lot about Jones or Clark the two fine safeties who give him great run support because the guys up front have done such a great job. They sure have third down and four coming here. Two yards officially rushing for NC State. That pretty much says it all. Third down and four. The whole lot of the game. This will be interesting. They've got Leak and Hamrick as their wide receivers. They're going to option this time, though, to Robinson. And Robinson gets the first down at the 37 yard line of Duke. Keenan Holly on the tackle. 
And it's a gain of eight yards, good enough for the first down, and keeps NC State's drive going. Man, we like Robinson. Nope. He's easy to see. Here's a kid scored 56 career touchdowns in high school. Now watch him square up the shoulders. See, at this point, full steam ahead. Steam ahead. And then I always like it at the end. See, we can see this on this on this angle. Guys who get into it and enjoy playing the game. See, this is fun. See? Not much fun for fun. NC State, though, because there's just been a penalty marched off. Another holding call against the Wolfpack to erase another big play, Doc. Well, that's no fun. If you're in red, boy, and if that was the if that was the play there after the first down had been secured, then that'll make that gentleman in the middle of your screen awful angry. So we love receivers to block. Here you see Leak on it. Now the play's over. Now at this point, you got to back it up. But the flag was already down. See, flag is there. So that was already down. That is the third time today that an NC State first down after a running play has been erased. They have four penalties on the afternoon. Back to throw Barnett across the green to a screen to Robinson. Has some blocking, actually tripped over his blocker. Hamilton brings him down at the 43 yard line. And it has a gain of close to 10. Now, but Knutson comes out. Nice little setup on this. I like the play call. It really was. But up front, the big guy's got to charge up front. So you can't gather yourself. Good job in there by Clark. But Newton Newton should have ran him over. But when a big guy gathers himself, forget about it. There's no way you're going to get 300 pounds to stop and start again. Lyman got to keep charging. Here comes the punt. Javier Wood, and he gets a good one out. He had a, high, a very tough day. It bounces in the end zone. NC State can't get down there to stop it. But the punt gets NC State out of the possession. Duke will have the football down by three when we come back to Carter Finley Stadium. In the lead, 27 24 as we take the turn into the fourth quarter. Another look at our Nations Bank ACC Salute to Excellence question. Who is the NC State receiver in 97 that helped make the Wolfpack the fifth team in league history to have a 1,000 yard rusher and receiver in the same year? Now, this one's easy. The answer, Torrey Holt. Who finished the 97 season with 1,099 yards receiving? He teamed with Tremaine Stevens, who had 1142 on the ground for the Wolfpack. First and 10, Duke has the football at their own 20 yard line. After the touchback off the punt, 1144 left to go. It's important to note that NC State has only one timeout remaining. Duke has two. Bobby Campbell, who's played very well, may have secured the starting job here. It goes to Latavius Wilkes, who picks his way through the minefield of NC State would be tacklers up to the 27 yard line. And uh, Pinnell, the backup outside linebacker, in on the stop. Well, the average starting position for the Blue Devils, midfield. Wolf pack their own 19. That's figured in two possessions have started at the NC State one. <laughs> The mistakes in the punting game. It could come back to haunt NC State before the day's over. Wilkes again. First down. And the rest is profit out to the 41 yard line. Gain of 15. Clayton White on the stop. Duke moving the ball on the ground. And Doc, this is where Fred Goldsmith hoped his team would be. Being able to do what they do very well, that's run the football. They are. Boy, I love centers that can snap the ball and then get up on the second and third level. Has a great job up front by Troy Andrew. That's 65 yards for Wilkes on the day and 11 carries. First and 10. Campbell to Wilkes. Cuts up inside and runs into Edrick Smith and Clayton White again. Forward progress will be marked out to the 43 yard line, a gain of three. Oh, a nice cutback, though. Uh, again, we watched the, the nice flow. Here's the exchange. I see he, he, he's there for a moment, and then nothing. There's a wolf pack. They start to kind of converge on you. Clayton White, who's played well. Fisher, the freshman, has played well. Both linebackers for the wolf pack. Second and seven. All of the 43 of Duke. Trail by a field goal. Campbell has plenty of time. And the pass is complete to Richmond Flowers. What a catch by Richmond Flowers. Stretched out. He got it to the 43-yard line. 
Richmond. He's got hands. He's got attitude. He's got a first down. Yeah, he got a first down. Get pass protection. Boy, that's strong. That is really nice. Nobody within three yards. And how this guy, he makes a catch. He's going down. Keeps the concentration on. First and ten. That's after a 13-yard hook up to Flowers. Sprint out to the right. Campbell throws and throws it out of bounds. Flowers covered by Harrison on the play. As we head down the stretch in this fourth quarter, Campbell making the good decision not to accept the sack. Throws it out of bounds. Keeps his team in possession at the 43 and a half yard line of NC State. That's demoralizing. And also training on defensive linemen to get a good rush and to not get credit for it. And that's a tough way, tough walk back to the home. You know, somebody told me though that, you know, even though Campbell has played well today, talking with some of the Duke people, it still might be they like his mentality off the bench mm -hmm. coming in, not starting, just getting a chance to survey the game and then coming in off the bench. So Nothing wrong with having two guys that can help you win. That's right. And Romine has shown he could do it before. Wilkins, or rather Wilkes, goes straight ahead and uh, Gets a little bit of yardage down to the 39 of NC State. Gain of four brings up second down and six. This is the eighth play of the drive coming up that started at the Duke 20. Football's an unusual sport that most guys want to be led by one guy. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to have this is our guy, he's our quarterback, and we do special things for him, like protect him, you know, play when we hurt for him. That's usually the train of thought. Well, we've seen some of that this drive with the protection that he's received. Third down and six. Duke trailing by three. They're at the state. 39. Campbell the gun. Too strong for Flowers. Scott and Perry covering. And that'll bring the punting unit in again. Campbell kind of disappointed in himself. He had the receiver out there in time to throw. There's a temperament that you've got to have to be good in this game. See, there's the route. Ball is away. Now watch it just at this point. Free hit? No, I don't think so. And he kind of puts the head down like I didn't really do that. <laughs> I loved him. I like Perry for taking the shot at him and I like Flowers for you know not fighting back but at least let you know that hey I don't take that. Here's Morton with the kick. And again Holt has to run away from this one and it goes into the end zone. It'll be brought back out to the 20. So NC State holds. They have a three point lead and they have the ball back with 838 left to go in the fourth quarter at Carter Finley. We'll take this break. You'll be back. 28 left to go here in this fourth quarter. NC State 27, Duke 24. As the sun starts to go down on the other side of Carter Finley Stadium, the activity on the field now starts to pick up as the focus continues on these two ACC foes who have gone back and forth in this second half. NC State was up 17 7 at the break. 27 24 the score now to give us to the fullback and there's not much there on first and 10 and Ryan Stallmeyer who's been all over the field picks up the tackle for the Duke Blue Devils. You're not always lucky to replace great players. T.K. Abunaway a year ago for the past several years for Duke and now Stallmeyer and DeLamalier fill the void. Good three four scheme that sees the linebackers very active. Stallmeyer, you're looking at how he looks at the NC State offense. Second down and ten. Now Duke shows blitz. It's nothing new. They do that every play. Barnett play action. Pass is complete to Coleman. Coleman in the open makes the fake on Hamilton and it is brought down. Fumbled the ball, but they say it was down at the 45-yard line of Duke. A 35-yard hookup. Guess what? No flags. First and 10 NC State. Both receivers owe their quarterback a lot, but just being tough. Here we watch the play fake. Sooner or later, there's 93 again. Combs gets a hit. 14th time the quarterbacks have been on the deck. And there you see Coleman, playmaker. I mean, just runs well after the catch. Barnett again, sets up well, steps up in the pocket, throws it, and right at the end, I've got to believe that affected the throw. Here comes the pitch to Robinson, and Robinson is hit. Steinbach in at the nose guard position for Eric Scanlon. Comes in and delivers the hit on Ray, uh, Ray Robinson. It's a drop on the play of two yards. 
thing about this defense, they they get you for losses. I mean, they're, they're, those guys up front, they're down linemen. They specialize in getting across in enemy territory and making you pay. Coleman and hold of the wide receivers as you look at Steinbaugh who made that last play. Second down and 12. Hold us to the bottom of the screen. Blitz is on from the safety. And Barnett sensed it and wanted to get hold, but overthrew it. Yeah, that was effective. You saw it, he saw it, but it works. It's so neat. You can get pressure, get in the quarterback's vision. Force him to alter the course of the pass. That's exactly what happened. And then you see on the outside. And there's the ultimate playmaker. <laughs> Boy, he would have, that would have been wild. That was six. Yeah, that was. Yeah, Grant Grant had fallen down. Yeah. Boy, did he throw him a fake on the cut? Comes out so smooth. He does. Accelerates in, comes out of the break well. I got a feeling this guy can play on the next level. That's a stretch. CNC State, five out of 13 on third downs. Rolling left against the blitz again, and this time Darius Clark, who came close last time, flattens Barnett at the NC State 47 yard line. It's a loss on the play of five yards on the rollout, and it'll bring the punt unit on. I like the gamble. Bob Trott has said, okay, if we go down, we're going down fight. Because he's starting to bring his corners down, bring in safeties. That means that you locked up on the outside one on one with Coleman and Holt. It's a risk that they've taken. They've taken the Blue Devils come up large. Yearwood gets the kick out of a lot of a pressure as uh, NC State sent 10. Or the Duke sent 10. And Hamilton flattens it at the 10 yard line. And that's where it goes. The punt of 42 yards called for a fair catch at the 11. Duke gets the ball down by three when we come back. 27, Duke 24. There's the time on the clock, 608. They to put in your cap to remember. NC State has only one timeout remaining. Duke has two. Duke with the football at their own 11. Bobby Campbell has been outstanding in the second half. Vivin his team within three, gives a good play action fake, steps up, fires to Montgomery complete. And Montgomery has the first down and more out to the 32 yard line. It's a gain of 21. Tony Scott on the tackle. And Duke has shown Doc. They can move the football. Well, they have an air of confidence about them right now. You can just tell in the huddle as they break the huddle as they go into it. There you see he had his eye on him the whole way. Now watch. Montgomery comes on the crossing route. Knows the ball is his way. Secures the catch in this case. Picks up more yards. First and ten. Duke from their own 32. Campbell this time hands off on the sprint draw to Latavius Wilkes and there's not much running we haven't seen much of B.J. Hill in the second half at all Darius Bryant redshirt freshman from Suffolk Virginia in on the stop Bryant has played well for the Wolfpack Corey Smith has been on a tear Bobby Cotton's played well LeVar Fisher's had some play. Clayton White has had some good play. Edric Smith, the freshman. Second down and nine. Campbell sprints out. Rolling on the corner. He's going to tuck it under and run. And Edric Smith drives him out and drives him out at the 36 yard line. It'll be a gain of close to five. And it'll bring up third down and about six. Xavius Wilkes running back who has scored has played well. Now watch this. Part of your task as a running back for you young kids, you got to be able to block. And there he gets all over Clayton White. That gives Bobby some room. He had an option. He could run, he could throw it. Nice block by Latavius Wilkes. Third and six from the 36 of Duke. They trail by three. Biggest play in the second half for the Blue Devils. Play action, Campbell back to throw. Has a man, and it is Dawood Rashid. His forward progress is to the 40, but he's not close to the first down. Edric Smith on the tackle. First time they've involved Rashid this afternoon. He's the permanent team captain. 
mystery of the mind. <laughs> Why do people throw underneath the flag? We see it week in and week out. If you have third and four, it does you no good to run a two-yard route. You got third and nine, it doesn't help you run a seven-yard route. You have to get to the sticks for it to work. And Duke is going for it. Fourth down two. Gotta have it for Duke. NC State can get the ball back in excellent field position if they don't. State showing blitz. Campbell rolling left. Complete to Montgomery for the first down at the Duke 45 yard line. Marcel Huff, the nickel back in for the stop, but Duke moves the chains with four minutes left. Well, when it's a pressure throw a catch in this big time, you go to your playmaker. And this time, Scotty comes up large. The offensive line gives him time. They give him time to secure it. Good throw. See how he went up? He went up and made sure he had that football. First down and 10 at the 45 yard line. Duke moving the football down by three. Rashid in motion. Hand off to Wilkes. Wilkes tripped over the block of his offensive lineman, Scott Lynch, that time. And gets maybe a yard to the 46 yard line. Again, NC State has only one timeout left. Duke with only two, but State in a position where they won't be more critical on their standpoint. You see Fred Goldsmith, and just to his left there was uh, Joe DeLamalor. Michael Kane looks on as we spell out the timeout situation once more. Because Duke can run the football, it just gives them a tremendous advantage. Six play of this drive that started at their own 11. Second down and nine. Campbell, sprint out pass, complete at midfield to Montgomery. A connection of four yards. Bring up third and five. You like to keep balls on the edge, outside of the numbers in this situation. Hopefully you can get a catch and a run, or a catch and the guy gets out of bounds for you. And now as Duke gets near midfield, if they get this first down, and with the time remaining, the clock's moving with two and a half left. It may be up to the foot of Sims Lenhart once again, as it was last week when he kicked four field goals for the Blue Devils. Third down and five. State showing blitz. Campbell rolling left. Campbell throws. It is incomplete. Broken up by Lloyd Harrison and Clayton White. It takes a long time. You know, when you roll the pocket, you run into the boundary for a right-handed quarterback to go to his left. He's got to square up to really put any zip, you know, and have accuracy with the ball. So it's tough. He handled it pretty well. Timeout with the Duke Blue Devils to talk things over. Do they go for it on fourth down? It almost seems they have to, down by three with 2-12 left. ACC football was brought to you by Nations Bank. Nations Bank lends more money to small businesses than any bank in America. By Pepsi, the choice of the ACC. By Amico, you expect more from a leader and you get it. By Advance Auto Parts, the best part is our people. By Buick LeSabre, for safety and peace of mind. And by Nationwide Insurance. For insurance coverage and financial services that meet your needs, call a Nationwide Insurance agent today and get Nationwide on your side. Welcome back to Carter-Finley Stadium, the biggest point in this ball game so far. NC State up 27-24, Duke with the ball. They have fourth down and five at midfield, and they're going for it. They have no choice. Give up the ball here, they may not see it back. Flowers and Montgomery to the wide side of the field. Bobby Campbell has been pretty good in the second half under the center. Campbell sprinting left, has protection, fires, incomplete, knocked down. Knocked down by Lloyd Harrison. NC State has held. That's a great job by the pack. I still contest it is very difficult for a right-handed quarterback to roll left. You know, get squared up and throw with accuracy. Now, he can do it, and he's shown that he can do it. An outstanding athlete, but at that point, now watch it. See, he, he, he just, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, I like the way they collapsed. They ran the same type of play twice, which gives the defense recognition. 
You know, they saw it the play before, and you see it again. Good play by the Wolfpack. Bobby Campbell knows the result. Yeah, he battled, though. Yep. The guy battled. Yes, he did. Give him that. Now it's up to NC State to get it first down. Jawan Clark is the tailback. Butler is behind him in the eye. First and 10 NC State at midfield. Barnett rolling out as if to throw. He'll tuck it under, soak some time up, and get some space on the corner. Got to stay in, too. I think he stayed in. Kendrell Knight knocks him out of bounds. He's down to the 42-yard line. Yeah, that's going to be a gain of eight. Yeah, he stayed in. Clock still was, moving. That was smart. That's thinking. So the clock moves. Duke with only one timeout. And now Duke has taken that timeout, I believe. Yes, they have. Duke takes their final timeout. So, having that timeout taken, their final timeout by Duke, our delivery of the game is brought to you by Priority Mail from the United States Postal Service. Here's a pass to Chris Coleman. It's going to be complete for 27 yards. He turns upfield. Now, as he turns to get hit from behind from Keenan Holly, it's picked up, and the delivery is made by Torrey Holt who runs 53 yards with a fumble recovery for the score. And that happened 30 seconds into this second half. Our delivery of the game, Torrey Holt would not be deterred. Fumble or no fumble, he was going to deliver that one to the end zone. Heisman candidate. I mean, that says enough. Can you imagine that? 144 left to go now. NC State is in an excellent position here with Duke having exhausted their final timeout at second and two to keep the chains moving. This important first down will pretty much end it. Oh, I think in that last play, NC State showed you they were going for a score. I mean, he rolled right. He had a, he had a corner route that was open. He elected to run on. He kept the clock alive, which was smart. And he but stayed the, in bounds. Stayed in bounds. The run pass option. Right-handed quarterback rolling to his right. Made it look easy. So he's on the right hash mark at the 42 yard line of Duke. A minute 44 left to play and Barnett will put him in motion again. The NC State defense held. Bobby Campbell did a pretty good job percentage wise against the best oh, pass did. defense in the ACC or the second best anyway. Bobby did well. I mean, Duke showed that it would fight and they're still fighting. They may come up with a tip on the interception. Well the way this thing, this thing is gone. We've, We've had mistakes in the punt game. That's why first downs are important to NC State. The last thing they want to do is line up a punt formation. And Butler straight ahead for the first down. But Butler did it to the 37. Let's take a look at our Amico players of the game for the Duke Blue Devils. Chris Combs. Now, four tackles doesn't look like much, but one of those for loss, and he had at least eight quarterback pressures oh, this afternoon. That's being modest. Chris money. Combs was huge for the Duke defense. And Torrey Holt, of course, uh, with two touchdowns on the day. There's Chris Combs, the junior from Roanoke, Virginia. Torrey Holt, a senior from Gibsonville, North Carolina. First and 10 NC State, and the clock can stop no more unless State walks out of bounds with it. Duke does not have any more timeouts, and we'll see a lot of Bill Butler here on this drive. He'll plow down to the 31-yard line. And NC State getting closer to securing this win here today. The Wolfpack trying to up their record to four and two. And trying to up their ACC record to two and one. Clock moving. We're under a minute to play, and it's second and five, and NC State's going to take their time. There's nothing like it when you have a fullback that you can feed in the waning moments of the game and secure victory. High percentage. Michael Kane flanked by Robbie Caldwell, his assistant head coach. Pretty good fisherman, actually. And now, okay, Robbie catch him. Yeah, Robbie can catch him. I was uh, paired up with him on a fishing trip down in Florida on an ACC excursion, and he did a pretty good job. I didn't catch him. Sims Lenhart only hoped that he could have a role in this game at the end, but it wasn't to be. As NC State stopped Duke at midfield, and the clock will run out on this one. Not another play coming in today's game, and the NC State. Coaching staff already out on the football field. Fred Goldsmith and the Duke staff coming across the other way, and the seconds tick away on this NC State win. Time runs.
comes out, and the North Carolina State Wolfpack wins it 27 24 in a tough battle with Duke. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. Carolina, where the Tar Heels of North Carolina will take on their ACC arch rivals, the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. See it on many of these same stations at 12 noon. Despite giving up 14 points to the kicking game, the NC State Wolfpack hold on and beat Duke 27 24. For Doc Walker and Charlie Frederick, I'm Steve Martin reminding you you've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football.